It's the Reds on Radio. With Marty Brenneman and Joe Nutzel. Reds baseball is brought to you by Stroh. Family brewers for 200 years. From one sports lover to another. And by the Marathon Oil Company. People who believe in people. By the First National Bank of Cincinnati. Where your money grows safely in high return certificates of deposit. By the Pepsi-Cola Bottling Company of Cincinnati. Bottlers of Pepsi-Cola, Dr. Pepper, and Sweat Products. By Frisch's. Frisch's. Sports or any kind of fun, they just naturally go together. And by Riverside Ford in Newport. A block and a bridge from downtown Cincinnati. Now, for all the play-by-play action of Cincinnati Reds baseball, we go to Marty Brenneman and Joe Nuxall. everybody from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, Joe Nuxall and yours truly, Marty Brenneman, welcoming you to Reds Baseball. Tonight we wrap up the miniseries, a two-game set against Yogi Berra's New York Mets, and for the Reds, a bid to try and split the two-game series. What were the Mets behind Kuzman and Apodaca winning 6-2 last night? Tonight we'll go with right-hander Jack Billingham. He's won three and lost three. The Mets will counter with their ace, right-hander Tom Seaver, who's won five of eight decisions. We'll be back with the game's lineup in just a moment. Most likely you know from nothing about banks, right? Of course, right. Well, take it from me, you've got to shop for a bank. It makes sense. You're at the grocery, you're looking for a nice melon. What do you do? You go through the whole batch, sniffing and squeezing until you find just the right one. So you buy a bank the same way. Buy a bank, of course you buy a bank. You put your money in it, right? So you look for a bank with the kind of services you need. You look for security. Because I ask you, where would we all be without a little security now and then? You look for a bank with nice people who know their business and the needs of their customers. And you look for a bank with a good, solid reputation, a bank you can lean on. And have I got a bank for you? Like a glove that fits your needs. First National Bank of Cincinnati, right? Of course, right. First National Bank. Here's the way they'll line up tonight for the New York Mets. Leading off and playing center field is Del Unser. Batting number two and at second base, Felix Mion. Ed Greenpool will be at first base and bat third. Getting number four, hot hitting Rusty Staub in right field. Batting fifth and playing third base is Joe Torrey. Getting number six, the left fielder, John Milner. Batting seventh and catching, Jerry Grody. Getting number eight, the shortstop, Bud Harrelson. And batting nine and pitching right-hander Tom Seaver. Again for New York, it's Unser in center field, Mion at second base, and Greenpool at first. Staub in right, Torrey at third, and Milner in left field. With Grody catching, Harrelson at shortstop, and Seaver pitching. For Cincinnati, the leadoff batter will be third baseman Pete Rose. Batting number two, the right fielder Ken Griffey. Joe Morgan will bat third and play second base. Getting number four and catching is Johnny Bench. Tony Perez at first base will hit fifth. Batting number six in center field is Cesar Geronimo. Dave Concepcion, the shortstop, will bat seven. Getting number eight, playing left field, George Foster. And batting nine and pitching for Cincinnati tonight is right-hander Jack Billingham. Once again, going over the Reds' batting order, it's Rose at third base, Griffey in right field, and Morgan at second. Bench catching, Perez at first, Geronimo in center field. With the bottom three batters in the Cincinnati lineup, Concepcion at shortstop, Foster in left field, and Jack Billingham pitching. The Reds are just now being announced to this Riverfront Stadium crowd as we begin play against the New York Mets tonight in 86-degree temperatures. The weather continues to be unseasonably warm here in the middle part of May. It's been very humid. It's been great baseball weather, and the Reds are hoping that uh, things will be kinder to him tonight than they were last night when the Mets took the game by a final of 6-2. to two. Now with the Reds on the field, the playing of our national anthem.
broadcast is authorized at a broadcasting rights granted by Cincinnati Reds Incorporated solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Cincinnati Reds Incorporated is prohibited. The announcers on this broadcast are employed by the Cincinnati Reds Incorporated. Right-hander Jack Billingham, right-hander Tom Seaver. Joe, a former pitcher, those two names, if things go as... I'm sure Yogi and Sparky hope they go. This could be quite a pitching duel tonight. Uh, very well could be. And, of course, uh, the last time these two guys met, why Tom Seaver came out the winner on a 3-2 score in Shea Stadium and a good ball game. But uh, as we point out, most every time when a veteran pitcher like Jack and Seaver, in most cases, if they get by the early innings, they usually get tougher as the... Uh, game goes on, and we saw that certainly in Tom Seaver in New York, where we got a couple of runs early, and then from that point on, it became very difficult. So, if they're both sharp, we can see a heck of a pitching duel there. Well, the Mets a hot club. They won five out of their last six games. They had the winning streak snap Sunday against Houston, but came back to win here last night, six to two, behind Jerry Kuzman. And Jack Billingham looking for his fourth victory of the season. He'll be facing here in the top of the first inning. Center fielder Del Unser, second baseman Felix Mian, and first baseman Ed Cranepool. Unser coming on as a defensive replacement late in last night's game. He's their top hitter average-wise, batting 324 among the everyday players with two homers and 11 runs batted in. Left-handed hitter against Jack Billingham making his ninth start, two complete games, and a 398 earned run average. Here's Billingham's first pitch to Unser, and it's taken a fastball just below the letters. A strike is called. Joe mentioned Jack pitching very well his first time out against New York. He comes back with an off-speed pitch that stays high to Unser, and the count is even at one ball and one strike. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch swung on a hard one hopper to shortstop off Concepcion. It goes into left field where it's picked up there by George Foster. That ball was slicing off to Davies' right, but uh, it appeared it would be a routine play for him. It hit off his right knee, kicked out in the left field, and well, Concepcion has been charged with a second error in as many games in this series. Dropped a pot fly last night in shallow left center field, and now... There is a game-opening ground ball off the bat of Del Unser. It brings up Felix Mian, the New York second baseman. Felix hitting 231, a homer, 12 RBIs. Last night had a couple of hits, including a double, and scored a New York run. The pitch to him from Billingham is high and away, ball one. In the Reds' infield, we go with Tony Perez at first, Joe Morgan at second, Concepcion at short, Rose at third. Foster in left field, Geronimo in center, Griffey in right with bench behind the plate. Hunter leading at first base as Billingham stretches, delivers the ball, but it foul as Mian tries to move the base runner into scoring position. It's even at one and one. This is not a running club by any stretch of the imagination, the New York Mets. They've attempted only ten steals this season, have been successful on six of them, and as far as the man over at first base is concerned, Hunter has attempted two and is been successful one time. Rose playing just in back of the front white line at third as Billingham delivers a throw on to Perez and Unser is back. Jack 6-3 lifetime against the New York Mets. Checking in with Johnny Bench. He is on the way with a 1-1. Unser goes. Pitch swung out of base hit by Concepcion into left center. Foster up with the ball as Unser goes to third and the Mets play hit and run to perfection here in the first inning and right away they're knocking on the door against Jack Billingham. Well in, in most cases uh, Mion's going to hit the ball to the right side but I think he just made up his mind he was going to pull and taking a chance that David would be covering which he was. The runners at first and third nobody out on an error and a base hit to left center field and here is first baseman Ed Cranepool. Rainpool, a batting average of 354 with seven runs batted in. Not an everyday player for New York. He's been up only 48 times with 17 hits and three doubles. The answer at third, Neon at first, a pitch swing and a miss. Bruce Broming behind the plate, calling balls and strikes with the base umpires. A line thusly, Art Williams at first, Paul Rungi at second base, and Ed Vargo at third. Two men on, nobody out. 
Billingham studying to Johnny Bench side. Now checks the runners and brings the 0-1 pitch to Crane Pool. That's foul. Back behind the plate, and it's quickly 0-2. Cleanup batter and right fielder, Rusty Staub, is on deck. Reds not losing any ground to the Dodgers last night. Bill Bottom pitched two-hit baseball at Dodgers Stadium. The Cubs coming up with two first-inning runs off Don Sutton, and Chicago a winner, 2-1. to one. Second straight loss for Don Sutton, who's now 7-3, and three, but, boy, when you lose him the way he's lost him, it certainly would not be indicative of the man being in any sort of slump. 3-2 to two to the Pirates after... Pitching seven in the third innings of perfect baseball and then getting beat last night, allowing two runs in the first inning, and that was it. 0-2 pitch to Crane Pool. A fly ball hit into right center field. That's going to get a run home and maybe a hit. It is caught as Griffey and Geronimo crisscross. Griffey caught the ball. Hunter will score, and the Mets take a one to nothing lead here in the first inning. Well, I think, really, if Jack did not want that ball there, not by any means, I believe he was looked like he wanted a fastball low and off the plate outside, and he happened to get it over the plate. It was down low, but 0-2, uh, I know that Jack didn't want it to where he could hit it with that kind of authority. Sacrifice fly for Ed Cranepool that produces his eighth RBI of the season, what with Unser scoring from third base. Neon remains at first. And here is Rusty Staub, who delivered a two-run double last night to get the scoring underway in that four-run fifth inning against Don Gullett. He's batting 315, right up there among league leaders in RBIs with 27 and has five home runs. Owns one off Jack Billingham. The pitch to him, bouncing ball over the mound. Concepcion steps on the back for one, throw to first, a double play. In the inning for New York, a run and a hit, an error, and nobody left on. And after a half inning of play, it's New York 1. Cincinnati coming to bat. People I see every day Stop me on the street and say You're looking good here Who put the sunshine in your world So I tell them about your laughter Lighten up my cloudy day And the feeling of contentment that I know Kelly Garrett for the Stroh Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. Family brewers for 200 years. Well, Tom Seaver goes to the mound at the bottom of the first inning with a run lead with which to work. And this, of course, the second time we've seen Seaver this season. The first time his act was, uh, well, very inspiring if you were a New York Met fan, but not so if you were on the Cincinnati side. Brett's got to him for two first inning runs, including a... Lead-off home run by this man stepping in right now, Pete Rose. But after that, Seaver closed the door, allowing the Reds only three hits the rest of the way. And New York coming up with a game-winning run in the bottom of the eighth inning to win it 3-2. to two. Rose is in. Seaver delivers to Pete, and the first pitch is a fastball high and outside. Five and three is record. One, nine, seven is earned run average. He's completed what he has started five times in eight. The 1-0 pitch is again up high. It's ball two. 64 innings, he's given up at 53 hits, has struck out 47, and walked only 16. So Tom Seaver is pitching and pitching very well. Rose swings on the 2-0 pitch, a foul strike to the screen. 2-1. and one. Run against Billingham in the top of the inning unearned. Unser, the man who scored the run, and he reached on Concepcion's error to start the game. Hot field straight away for Pete. 2-1 pitch. That's too much inside, and it's ball three. Crane Poole, Neon, Harold Centauri make up the New York infield. There's ball four, high and outside. So Rose draws a walk to start the first inning for Cincinnati. And it'll bring up right fielder Ken Griffey. In the New York outfield, they got Milner in left, Unser in center, and right field Rusty Staub with Jerry Grody again behind the plate. Griffey stepping in, batting 333, a homer, 11 RBIs on the year. 
for delivering to the plate. Seaver will deliver to first base. That walk for Pete Rose is 24th of the season. He is second on the club behind the 36th of Joe Morgan, who moves on deck. Okay, Seaver sights a sign. He stretches, and the pitch on the way to Griffey, taken for a strike, an off-speed pitch. Hey, Griffey had a good day against Seaver the first time around. He had a couple of hits, both doubles. Of course, it was his double in the top of the eighth inning that saw Rose's bid to score all the way from first base, cut down on two perfect throws from Unser to Phillips to Grody at the plate. Here's the 0-1 delivery, and that's high to level the count at 1-1. and Griffey, the most productive hitter against Mets pitching up to this point. Been up 14 times. He's had six hits. Got Torrey drawn in at third. Rose a short lead at first. And that is strike two call. As Seaver jumps out in front at ball and two strikes. Hot day for the Reds tomorrow. And then we welcome the Philadelphia Phillies in. Friday night at 8.05, a 7 o'clock start on Saturday night. And then 2.15 on Sunday. That just missed. Two balls and two strikes. Rose getting a walk to start the inning on five pitches. And now Griffey awaits a 2-2 pitch from Tom Seaver. It's on the way. And that is a ground ball that Neon will backhand. He throws on to Harrelson. He turns completely around and then elects not to throw on to Cranepool. Neon going off to his right to backhand Griffey's ground ball. They get the force play of Pete at second base. And here's Joe Morgan with Griffey at first and one down. Morgan banged up a couple of ways in the Montreal series. has been in somewhat of a slump. His average has dropped down to 338. Hitless in four times to the plate in the series opening here last night. And Hitless in five times up in the Saturday game in Montreal. The pitch, swing and a foul ball in and out of the glove of Grody. Well, Joe officially hitless in his last ten times up to the plate. Has three homers, 20 RBIs. Mets leading one nothing in the bottom of the first inning at Riverfront. Here's a pitch. Swung on a fly ball, hit back into left field. Milner racing back toward the warning track and will make the catch. Griffey, the other side of second, now has to really hustle to get back out into first base. Well, I'll tell you, Joe Morgan really hitting into tough luck. He had a ball here deep to right field last night. The stop caught with his back to the wall and now sends Milner onto the warning track in left field to bring down this one here tonight. Johnny Bench with two men out, and Griffey still at first base. John one hit among the seven that the Reds garnered off of Kuzman and Apodaca last night, and that one hit was an eighth-inning home run, his seventh of the year. Johnny carries a two fifty six batting average. Seaver will turn and throw quickly on to first, Griffey back. Now the pitch to Bench. Ball inside. Well, you look at Seaver's lifetime record against Cincinnati, and he certainly has not fared well at all. 22 decisions and 13 have been losses. Here's a ball hit off the end of the bat to first baseman Cranepool. He'll wait for Bench and put the tag on him. That retires the Reds in the first inning. No runs, no hits, a man left on, and after one complete, New York won, Cincinnati nothing. Stop and enjoy a big, big boy, and now that hamburger treat. The national favorite coast to coast, so stop and enjoy a big, big boy. Watching the Reds win at Riverfront Stadium has always been a great way to spend the day. And one sure way to add to that enjoyment is going to Frisch's before or after the game. It's all part of the tradition. Why Frisch's? Because not only does Frisch's offer a wide variety of great tasting treats from sandwiches to full course dinners, they also have the convenience of curb service. When you drive into Frisch's, there is never any waiting for curb service. You simply press the button on the speaker, and your order is taken immediately. Fast, easy, and convenient. That's the best way to describe Frisch's curb service. So the next time you're on your way to the game, curb your appetite. 
Visit your nearest Rich's drive-in restaurant. Stop and enjoy a big, big boy, and now with that hamburger treat. The national favorite, coast to coast, so stop and enjoy a big, big boy. One nothing, New York Mets. Second inning here at Riverfront Stadium as Joe Torrey will stand in against Jack Billingham. Torrey batting with 237, but uh, has simply been devastating against our pitching staff. Eight hits and 16 times up. He had his first home run of the year last night, one of four hits that he had off of Reds pitching and knocked in three runs. That's getting to Jack for a run in the first inning on an error, a base hit, and a sacrifice fly off the bat of Crane Pool. Here's a pitch to Torrey, and that's in for a strike. O one one delivery, swung on, a bat handle foul ball, well back into the green seats along the first baseline, strike two. New York club, one game over the 500 mark now, and... Only three and one-half games behind Chicago. Breaking ball is high. Cubs two and a half up on Philadelphia. The Phillies falling on hard times to some extent now that they're on the road. Houston beat them again last night. Here's a chopper charging his rose. He will cut it off. He'll throw on the run, and he got him. Nice play. Well, I'll tell you, we've pointed it out a number of times in the last three weeks, but he has simply made all the plays that you would expect from a guy, and certainly some that you wouldn't expect from a man who has been introduced to third base after a, a brief spell there in 1966. Well, that particular play in particular, Marty, because Pete is playing Corey very deep with two strikes, and the ball uh, hit very slow, and he made a fine play, got a lot on the ball, uh, throwing on the run. John Milner, the batter, with one out. It's a ball to him. Breaking ball is in. Strike call, one and one. Milner not seeing a great deal of playing time lately because of a growing pull. And has not been swinging a real productive bat for New York. He hits a ground ball. It bounces at the bag and goes by Perez to right field. Milner takes a turn. Griffey up firing from the corner. It'll not be in time as the ball hits by Concepcion and picked up. Midway between second and third by Rose. So Milner gets a break on that hard smash as it hit the bag. Caromed on down the right field line, and he ends up at second base. Second New York hit in the game. It brings up catcher Jerry Grody. Grody batting 264 with one home run. He has knocked in 11 runs. New York leading, one nothing in the second inning, and at Milner in scoring position with one out at second base. Backward glance by the Cincinnati right-hander, ground ball right side. That's fielded deep by Morgan. Throw to first to Billingham, not in time. He bobbles, and Milner will score. Well, Joe Morgan made a fine play deep behind the back white line, but he threw on to Billingham, who could not come up with the off-balance throw cleanly. And Milner running, scoring all the way from second base. They scored a hit for Grody, an RBI, and 2 nothing New York. Well, Milner was coming all the way, Marty. He didn't stop uh, when he saw Jack go down. He was running all the way. He, uh, where Joe Field of the ball, and, of course, Milner with a good jump play. was just, the ball was hit rather slowly as... Uh, as we saw, and I, I don't think Jack had he been able to feel the ball cleanly uh, had a play at home. But Harrelson now with a run home for New York. But he primarily playing against left-handed pitching, but he's in tonight against right-hander Jack Billingham and batting 216 with an RBI. Pitch to him, swing and a miss. That's jumping out quickly in front tonight after last night, really breaking the game open as things turned out with four runs in the fifth inning. Proved to be enough for Kuzman and the man who finished up for him, Bob Apodaca. Pitch, breaking ball way inside as Harrelson spins away from the plate. One ball and one strike. Talking about standings earlier, the Reds starting out tonight in a deadlock for second place with the San Diego Padres, who have returned home and are playing very well. They beat the Cardinals 5-2 to two last night behind Alan Foster. They're 19-19. and 19. We're 20-20. and 20. 
Here's a fly ball hammered to right field. Griffey drifting back, camping under it, and makes the catch. Two away. That'll bring up the pitcher, Tom Seaver. Seaver's been up 20 times this season with a couple of hits, both singles. Right-hander all the way. Billingham delivers. Pitch is swung on and rifle to center field. That's a base hit for Seaver. Brody to second base holding there. That hit will keep the inning going as we move back to the top of the New York batting order for center fielder Dell Unser. Third hit in the inning and fourth hit inside two innings off Billingham. Brody at second, Seaver at first, and Unser up for the second time in as many innings. He reached on Concepcion's era at shortstop in the first inning and scored the first New York run. Jack Billingham getting off to somewhat of a slow start. Unser, of course, playing with the Philadelphia Phillies when the Mets picked him up in the Tug McGraw deal. So the Mets figured he'd hit fairly well for him, but I don't know if they figured they'd hit this well. Here's a call strike on the outside. Best year was two years ago when he batted 289 in 136 games for the Phillies. Further back than that, batted 286 in 1969 with the Washington Senators. Two men on, two men out. Pitch swung on and missed. A breaking ball, and Unser really hacking at it. 0 oh 2. So Billingham, a strike away from ending the New York second. Delivers again. This one swung on, line in the right field. That'll fall for a hit. Coming round third and home with a third New York run is Grody to throw, not in time to bench. Seaver goes to third, and the New York hit parade continues. Well, you don't know what to say. That's another 0-1-2 pitch that has cost him a run. And uh, Jack, he, he, if you paid attention to him standing in foul territory, no one is more aware of it than he. But uh, by golly, you just have to concentrate. Boy, you work hard to get an advantage on a hitter, and then... Uh, make a bad pitch. That was a hanging curveball to uh, Dell Unser. And again, uh, you go back to the pitch he swung on and missed. Uh, he wanted it down and in, I'm sure. But that's uh, the way this game is. And Jack knows he made a mistake. And a lot of people know he made one. Joe Morgan has gone into the mound from second base. And as Billingham prepares to work to Felix Mian, left-hander Fred Norman begins loosening in the Reds' bullpen. Three to nothing. Out front, New York, a run in the first. Two so far here in the second. And Neon looking for his second base hit. Pitch. That's below the knees. 4-1. After Torrey was thrown out on a fine play by Rose at third, Milner a double on the right field line. Grody's infield hit scored him from second base. Call strike. A Harrelson fly ball to right, but then Saber singled on... Billingham's first pitch, and Unser has singled the right field to drive in the third New York run. The on-calling time gets the rising back from the on-deck hitter, Cranepool. Count is even at one and one with Seaver at third and Unser on at first base. Twelfth RBI of the year for Dell Unser. Billingham has a sign. Here comes a 1-1 pitch. That's foul. Ball and two strikes. Outfield giving a lot of room to Mian in left center field. Geronimo really pulled around toward right. Billingham stretches. Delivers, swung on, fly ball, hit down the right field line, hit well, but a foul ball. Count stays at a ball and two strikes. 
As Unser, halfway between second and third, when that ball settled into the seats and left, now cuts back across the infield on his return to first base. Well, Norman is throwing, but joining him in the Reds' bullpen is right-hander Pedro Bourbon. Neon strikes out swinging on a breaking ball, and the second inning is finally over. New York with a pair of runs on four base hits, two men left on, and after an inning and a half, the Mets three and the Cincinnati Reds nothing. For most of us, with all there is to do in this world, time can slip by pretty fast. And all of a sudden you realize there are people you care about that you just haven't remembered for a long time. Or if you have remembered them, you just haven't taken a little bit of time to see how they're doing let them know that you do care. That's why the Marathon Oil Company suggests that if you do care about someone you haven't been in touch with for a while, you just take the time to drop them a card or give them a call or maybe even pay them a visit. You'll probably find that taking that time to care a little bit extra will make both you and them a little bit happier the rest of the time. Oh, you don't have to, but maybe you want to. Day is just around the corner, and the Cincinnati Reds have the perfect gift idea for you. How about a Cincinnati Reds tie for Dad? High quality club tie is red with a ball club's official C Reds emblem in a white club design throughout the tie. It's priced at $10 and on sale exclusively at 580 Gibson News. Stop by on your next visit to downtown Cincinnati, corner of 6 and Walnut, in the 580 building. Well, we got some catching up to do. We're down 3 to nothing as Tony Perez will lead off the home second against Tom Seaver. Tony batting 214 with five, R- five homers and 25 RBIs. Takes the first pitch of fastball in on him. Ball one. Seaver back dealing. Perez swings and misses as he comes to Tony with a pitch away. One and one. Perez hitting the ball well lately. Had six hits in his last 16 times up. Had a double and a triple in three official trips last night. He hits a drive deep down the left field line, but that ball is going to be a foul ball. Well, that was back into the yellow seats. Perez giving it a pretty good ride, but all it is is strike two. Geronimo on deck. He'll be followed by Dave Concepcion. Seaver out in front on the count. Strike three call on the outside part of the play. Tom Seaver, his first strike out of the game as he gets Perez looking. Geronimo, the batter, hitting 296. Now you look at Tom Seaver's statistics and you note a very impressive two home runs he has given up this season in 64 innings. One of those owned by Pete Rose. Left-handed batting Geronimo swings at pitch on a pitch down and in on him. Strike one. Three nothing New York home second. One out the base is empty. Strike two swinging. No and two. Norman continues to loosen up in the Reds bullpen. Borbone had been down there throwing, but he's now stopped. Seaver shaking off Grody's sign shakes him off again. Still looking, Seaver. Now to the wind up in the 0-2 pitch. That's too low. And it's a ball and two strikes. Outfield, pretty much straight away. Bouncing ball over the mound. Beyond, behind second, throws quick, and he got it. Mark Williams with a very emphatic outside will... Draw the ire of first base coach George Sugar as Geronimo disgustedly slings his batting helmet away. Two out hitter is Dave Concepcion, batting 294. Maybe an RBI is 21st of the season, two homers. 
Receiver works. Ball inside. Swung on, grabbed by Seaver on the mound. He lobbed throws on to Cranepool for the out at first base. It retires the side in order. The Reds are up and down. No runs, no hits, and after two complete. So that's three. The Reds, nothing. 200 years ago, if you went to a certain family inn in the village of Kier in Germany, you'd have found that the innkeeper was also a brewer, and that this brewer took great care in how he made his beer because his family name was on the line with every customer. It was true. In those days, one's family name and reputation was only as good as that beer he served. So he brewed it carefully, smooth and mellow. Today, that family inn no longer exists, but the family does. And they are here in America, where they still put their family name on the line with every beer. Strode beer. Smooth and mellow Strode. For 200 years, from one dear lover to another. One dear lover to another. The Stroh Brewery Company, Detroit, Michigan. Family brewers for 200 years. Let's pause quickly for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. The home of the $5,000 button, WLW Cincinnati. Purchase your Cincinnati Reds tickets downtown at 580 Walnut and at the stadium at Burkhart's in Kenwood, Tri-County, Beachmont, Hyde Park, and Northgate, and at Home Federal Savings in Western Hills. Ed Cranepool to open the third inning for New York, and here's Joe. All right, Marty, Ed Cranepool in the first inning, drove in the first run of the game with a sacrifice fly to deep right center field to Ken Griffey. The Mets with five hits off Bellingham, Jack delivers to Cranepool, and it swung on and missed. Ed Crane pulled a 334 batting average, and with the RBI in the first inning, that gives him eight for the year. Billingham back to the plate, swung on ground ball by Perez in the right field of a hit. And that is number six for the Mets off Billingham. Jack, a rocky start here tonight. Rusty stopped to the plate. Rusty bounced into a double play to end the first inning. Stop with a eight-game hitting streak. Had 13 hits and 28 times to the plate for a 464 batting average. In those eight games, Freddie Norman heads to the Reds' bullpen to start throwing. Bellingham the stretch and the pitch to Stop missing outside with a fastball. That was afternoon. The Giants over the Pirates two to one. The fourth inning at Atlanta, the Braves leading Montreal four to nothing. Philadelphia at Houston, St. Louis at San Diego, Chicago at Los Angeles. The pitch to stop. That's again outside two and zero. Here the Mets leading three to nothing as they bat in the third inning. Time called now, and a ball is loose out of the Reds' bullpen and rolls over near the first base bag where Perez picks it up. Two balls, no strikes to count to Rusty Staub with Ed Cranepool at first base. The Mets getting one in the first, picking up two more in the second. Joe Torrey on deck. Bellingham looks into Johnny Bench. Has his sign, the set, and the 2-0 to stop. Again, high and outside. Three balls, no strikes. Well, Billy Hammond having all kind of problems. He's had two 0 and 2 pitches hit off of him tonight to cost him runs. 3-0 delivery. Staub has the green light. Bounces it to Perez. He goes Concepcion. Back to the bag. Double play. So Rusty Staub with a green light on the 3-0 and pitch bounces it to Tony Perez in a tough way. It goes 3-6-3. The second double play that Staub is hit into tonight. For the Reds, that's 37 on the year with two away now. Joe Torrey to the plate. Torrey leading off the second inning. Hit a slow chopper to the left side. Rose charging and throwing Torrey out by half step. He swings and misses a curveball. 
The rose is very deep right now on Joe Torrey. The outfield is shaded around to the right, particularly Geronimo in center. The 0-1. Fastball, again a slow chopper charging his rose. He gets it on the big hop, throws on to Perez. Easy play. So, what looked like trouble for the Reds in the third winds up just about nothing. The Mets, no runs, they get a hit. There were no errors, no one left on base. And at the middle of the third, it's New York three, Cincinnati nothing. train tickets available at all Shilato stores. Well, the Reds need three to get even with the Mets as they come to bat in the third inning. George Foster, Jack Billingham, and Pete Rose do up. Freddie Norman continues to throw in the Cincinnati bullpen. Foster, a 263 batting average. He's had six home runs, 13 RBIs, four doubles, and a triple. Tom Seaver has struck out one, has walked one. The pitch to Foster is a breaking ball and a foul tip into the mid of Jerry Grody. Seaver lines the 0-1 to Fox. That's a breaking ball swung on, chops slowly to Torrey at third. Running throw and they get him. A one away and Jack Billingham will hit for himself. Jack is hitting 125. He's had two hits in 16 times the plate. And an RBI. Jack with a base hit off Tom Seaver in New York. The outfield way around to the right for Billingham and shallow. Jack takes outside the ball from Seaver. One zero delivery, missing again outside. Two and zero. Mets getting a run in the first, two in the second. Two zero to Billingham. That's ball three, high and inside. So Tom Seaver behind Jack Billingham. Three balls, no strikes, with one out. He's back to the plate. That's a strike call. Three and one. Randy Tate throwing in the New York bullpen. There's ball four up high, and Jack Billingham draws a walk. Well, maybe that'll get something going. Second walk issued by Tom Seaver. That'll bring Pete Rose to the plate. Pete walked in the first inning. Well, we'd like to pass our sympathies along to Walter Alston's family. His father passing away, and uh, Walter, we understand, is in home in dark town. So... Great old guy. We knew him, Walt's dad, and sorry to hear it, but I'm sure he had a wonderful life. All right, the pitch to Rose. He takes it outside the ball, Tom Seaver. Ed Cranepool plays about four steps behind Billingham at first base with one out. Seaver the stretch, the 1-0. Rose takes this one, and it's in at the knees of call strike. One and one. He just hit in five straight games. A 309 batting average coming in. Seaver's 1 1 delivery. Low and inside. 2 and 1 now to Rose. Ken Griffey waits on deck. The Reds looking for their first base hit of the game. Seaver shakes off the sign. Now the stretch. And the 2 1 delivery. Swung on and hit the center field. Dell Lunch are moving in. Now drifting back. Has plenty of room. Makes the cut. 
two away and Ken Griffey to the plate. Griffey in the first inning hit into a force out, Rose being forced at second, beyond to Harrison. Griffey, 333 batting average, a home run in 11 RBI. Billingham at first base, and Cranepool, as we said, playing well behind him. Seaver sets and delivers to Griffey. Swung on and chopped foul. Breaking ball, 0 and 1. Joe Morgan waiting on deck with two away. Seaver ready in the 0 1 to Griffey. That's a chain swung on and missed, and he had Griffey way out in front. Tom Seaver, 0-2 now with Kenny Griffey. Seaver, 5-3 on the year. Find 197 earned run average. All right, Seaver ready and the 0-2 on the way. That's a curveball way outside that Jerry Grody has to dig out of the dirt. Down goes to a ball, two strikes. Reds off tomorrow, and then the Phillies move into town for three, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. One, two to Griffey. Swung on and missed, a breaking ball. Second strikeout for Tom Seaver. And that's it for the Reds in the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. One runner left on base. The end of three. It's the Mets three, the Reds nothing. <laughs> at the Stroh Brewery want to remind you that it's Stroh a party time. And they also want to give you a free recipe on how to Stroh a party. So, here goes. First, get yourself some good music like this. Next, add some good friends and neighbors. Spread around some good snacks like potato chips, pretzels, things your friends like, or be different, and surprise them with something new and good. Then top everything off with plenty of good cold Stroh's beer. That's the important part. Blend it all together, and you've got yourself one great party. Keep this in mind the next time you're out shopping, and look for the Stroh Party display featuring our Stay Cold 12-pack for every five years. And we'll see you at the party. The Stroh Brewery Company, the Great Machine. totals, New York, three runs, six hits, no errors. Cincinnati, no runs, no hits, and one error. For the Mets, John Milner will lead it off in the fourth, and back with the action, Marty Brenneman. Okay, Milner one for one. He had a ground ball down the first baseline his first time up that hit the bag and ended up as a two-base hit for the New York left fielder. Milner batting 219. And as he steps to the plate, the Reds' defense overshifts to the right side. Milner a dead pull hitter. Morgan behind the back white line at second base, equidistant between first and second. Concepcion pull well around toward the bag. Here's a pitch to Milner inside, ball one. Billingham touched for hits in every inning to this point. A foul ball at the plate off the first base line. The count even at one and one. Down in Atlanta, Darrell Evans has homered his first two times up. He now has eight home runs on the year, and the Braves lead the Montreal Expos 5-2. to 1-1 one, one pitch. High and outside on a change curve, ball two. With Evans' eight home runs, that means the Braves have three players in their starting lineup, all with eight. In addition, Dusty Baker and Dick Carell with eight homers apiece. Here's a high fly ball into left center field. George Foster waiting and makes a catch. We'll bring up Jerry Grody, who had a ball that Morgan fielded well on the outfield turf in the second inning to score John Milner from first from second base. Grody getting an infield hit out of it. That's out in front, 3 nothing as they bat in the top of the fourth. The curve stays inside.
Jack Reddy with the 0-1 delivery. That's another breaking ball that fails to get over. It's ball two. On deck and due up next is shortstop Bud Harrelson. Filling in, checks in with Bench. Delivers, swung on, fly ball right to Griffey running hard toward the line and makes the catch as he disappears from view in the right field corner. Two away. Harrelson 0 for 1. He had a fly ball to Griffey in the second inning. In the American League tonight, at the end of three, Cleveland on a Frank Robinson homer leads California 1 0. Oakland trails Boston 3 2 at the end of five. Tennis is homered for the A's. Petroselli, a home run for Boston. Kansas City, New York, a scoreless first inning at Shea Stadium. Call strike to Harrelson. Later on, it will be Texas at Milwaukee, Baltimore at Chicago, and Detroit at Minnesota. Billingham working with two out and the base is empty. O wanting to Harrelson. That misses outside, and it's one ball and one strike. One-one pitch. Curve is high. Ball two. First time in the game that Billingham has gotten the first two batters out. Milner a fly to left, Grody a fly ball to right. Behind to Harrelson, two and one, and that is low and inside, ball three. Tom Seaver putting batting gloves on both hands as he kneels on deck. Call strike to run it full. Now the 3-2 pitch to Harrelson. Swung on, stabbed by Billingham. He lost it. He recovers, and he throws him out at first base. Three up and three down for the New York Mets in the fourth inning, and after three and a half, it remains the Mets three and the Cincinnati Reds nothing. Josephine, I'm home. Well, it's about time, Napoleon. Say, what are you hiding under your coat? Persia? Mm -mm. Constantinople? No. A loaf of French bread, maybe? What is it? A new toaster. A new toaster. We don't need a new toaster. Listen, Josephine, I got it free for opening a savings account at the bank across the boulevard, and all I had to do was deposit $5,000. You call $5,000 for a toaster free, Napoleon? Sometimes I think you're short on brains, too. You've got to look hard for the right bank, one with the services we need, with plenty of security, nice people, and a good, solid reputation. And you want to chuck all that for a new toaster? It seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah, so did Waterloo. At First National Bank of Cincinnati, we don't give away toasters or frying pans or premiums of any kind because our business is banking. Pure and simple. First National Bank. Here's a message for vacationers. The Cincinnati Reds invite you to build a mini vacation around the Reds' home schedule this summer. Pick out the series you want to see and plan a trip to Cincinnati and Riverfront Stadium. Find a friendly city with many fine things to see and do, and you'll see some great Major League Baseball to boot. For a convenient Reds mail order envelope and information folder, call or write the Cincinnati Reds office at Riverfront Stadium. We are without a hit through the first three innings in this game and down to New York and Tom Seaver 3-0. Morgan, Bench, and Perez here in the fourth. Seaver delivers to Joe, and it's over for a strike. Morgan with a fly ball to deep left field in the first inning. Milner with a running catch on the warning track. Morgan watches this one bounce up and beyond the plate. One and one to him. In fact, the ball that Joe hit in the first inning is about the only well-hit ball the Reds have had off Seaver up to this point. Checks his swing on a fastball head high, two and one. Seaver continuing to work rapidly. Next pitch is ball three high. Now Joe has collected 36 of them this season. Seaver behind to him three and one. He's already walked two with... Walk to Rose in the first, and the third inning walk to Jack Billingham. 3-1 pitch. Swung on, and a rocket shot by the first baseman. Down the line. 
Rusty Stout getting a great bounce, and Morgan will have to settle for a single. Well, he hit a hammer by Greenpool, but Stout got a great break as the ball carried directly to him off the wall. Morgan took the big turn. That's the first Cincinnati hit, and it'll bring up Johnny Ben. Seaver got Johnny to hit one off the end of the bat to Greenpool in the first inning. Morgan leading at first. There goes Joe, the pitch to bench, a ground ball by the third baseman. That's a base hit as it caromed off Corey's glove. Here is Morgan round and third as Milner has trouble with it in the bullpen and bets at the second base. That'll be a two-base hit for Johnny Betts. And an RBI as Morgan scores. He was breaking on the pitch to the plate. And Betts had a shot that Corey could not handle. Milner went down to the bullpen to retrieve it. He had trouble locating it. By the time he returned to the infield, Morgan was easily in with a first res run and benches at second base. So Johnny gets his 27th RBI, and the Reds are down by two with nobody out and Tony Perez at the plate. Dog looked at a call third strike in the second inning. He hits one off the end of the bat, a foul ball by Crane Poole to the Reds' bullpen. After going three innings without a base hit, the Reds have had two in a row, a single by Morgan, a double by Bench, and a three-to-one score. Tony hit a loud foul in the second inning that found its way into the yellow seats and then Seaver came back to get him looking with a pitch on the outside part of the plate. Here's a foul strike right side and it's 0-2. Dodd getting a bit fired up now. As they've seen the Reds find the plate against Seaver here in the fourth inning. Have a potential run at second base with no one out. Brody hanging aside. Seaver, a backward glance at bench. Long pause, looking again to pitch. Here's a drive, left field, Milner back, he's looking, it's gone. Oh, we got a tie ball game. As Tony Perez is just taking Tom Seaver downtown, get off the facing of the green seats in left field and bounce back into the playing area. A 3-3 tie. Six of the year for Tony Perez at RBI 26 and 27 to tie it up at three apiece. Swing and a miss on a pitch up to him. Sabres 0-1. Missing inside a ball. Well, a good sign here in the fourth because the two guys that have to do it to make this a winning club have lit Mr. Seaver up. Foul ball, a line shot back into the stands above the New York dugout. Bench a double to knock in Morgan. Perez with a home run to left field. A 3-3 tie and still nobody out. Ronimo thrown out 4-3 in the second. Here's a pitch. He fouls this one off the glove of catcher Jerry Grody. Count stays at 1-2. and two. Philadelphia Houston underway. Wayne Twitchell against Larry Durker. The fills are scoreless in the top of the first. Lady Concepcion is undone. Geronimo stares out toward the mound. A Cedar winds, kicks, and fires. That misses at ball two. Strike three call as Seaver breaks the curveball over and gets Geronimo looking. Third strikeout for Tom Seaver, one out on the inning. New batter will be Davy Concepcion. 
Davey bounced to the mound in the second. Two ninety two batting average. Breaking ball outside. New York getting a run of the first, two in the second. Reds with three quick ones here in the fourth inning. Two balls, no strikes. At the end of two at Iowa, Indianapolis and Iowa tied at a run apiece. The Indians playing very well lately. They're only a half game behind division leader Evansville now. Foul ball. Indianapolis winning last night 14-6, to scoring five times in the ninth inning to tie the game and then scoring eight times in the tenth inning. To beat Iowa, Bruce Taylor in relief winning it. He's 4-0 on the year. DeFreitas and Don Warner, each home run. Indianapolis now has won six out of its last eight games. Ball three inside, three and one. Well, the kind of pitcher Tom Seaver is that affords the manager and the pitcher himself the luxury of letting him stay out there longer than you would somebody else. There's a call strike. Nobody throwing in the Mets bullpen, even though the Reds have gotten the tie and runs across in the fourth. 3-2, the count on Dave Concepcion. Seaver brings a payoff. He struck him out swinging with a pitch away. Davey tried to check his swing and couldn't do it. So Seaver bouncing back. He has chopped up back-to-back strikeouts. And will be working to Foster, who grounded the third in the third. I'd like to send along our best to Reds fans listening tonight on WNTH in Newark, Ohio, WNRG-FM in Grundy, Virginia, and WCTT in Corbin, Kentucky. Two men out, nobody on, three runs in, a 3-3 tie. Dillingham to Foster, swung on and fouled away. Next pitch, line to center field, a base hit. We'll pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. The home of the $5,000 button, WLW Cincinnati. You'll get some great gift ideas for graduation and Father's Day when you stop by the Cincinnati Reds 580 gift shop and newsstand, corner of 6th and Walnut in downtown Cincinnati. Foster's single to center, the fourth hit in the inning for Cincinnati with two down, Jack Billingham. A base runner in the third inning with a walk. There's a check of Foster. The pitch strike is called. Well, it's amazing where Beyond plays for many hitters. He's good three steps behind the back white line at second. Billingham fouls it off to the right. 0 and 2 the count. This, of course, the first visit into Cincinnati for the New York Mets. They'll have one more coming. Swing and a miss. Billingham a strikeout victim, and the Reds are out in the fourth inning, but not before we pick up three runs on four hits. A man is left, and after four complete, the Reds three, the Mets three. If you're out in Aurora, Colorado on a Friday or Saturday night, you'll probably find it's a pretty safe place to be, thanks to guys like Ed Gunner thinks enough of his town to want to keep it that way. He doesn't get paid for it, but money's not the reason Ed became a member of the Aurora Volunteer Police Department. Ed's a volunteer because he believes being a good citizen means more than just living someplace and minding your own business. Ed believes you have to do something to make a town a good place to live. Now, Ed Gunner doesn't have to spend a lot of his nights keeping his town safe, but he wants to because he believes in people. Ed Gunner is also a full-time employee of Marathon Oil Company at the Research Center in Littleton, Colorado. Marathon is people just like you and just like me who believe in people. Marathon Oil Company, people who believe in people. On we go to the top of the fifth inning. It's now a 3-3 lockup as Jack Billingham will be working first against Tom Seaver. And we like to point out we've got six couples very special to us on hand tonight from our 
Threads Radio sponsors from Security Moving and Storage, Mr. and Mrs. Don Bullock, Jr., from Firestone Tire and Rubber, Mr. and Mrs. Jerry Browning, Mr. and Mrs. Dan Brogan, and Mr. and Mrs. John Lampy. From Burkhart's, Mr. and Mrs. Ralph Nash, and from the J.S. Friedman Advertising Company, Mr. and Mrs. Joel Friedman. Certainly glad to have you with us, and, well, we're back in. 3-3 tie, here's Seaver. Had a single to center in the second. Pitch, call strike. Now Darcy begins to throw down in the Cincinnati bullpen. Swing and a miss, a big breaking ball. Billingham quickly two strikes out in front of his opposite number, Tom Seaver, with Del Unser kneeling on deck. Line foul. Boyd McMillan ducks underneath of at the first base coaching box. Count stays at 0-2. Here's a ground ball, slapped slowly down the third baseline, and Rose can't handle it. Hit off the end of Pete's glove and kicked into foul ground. To wait and see how they score that one as Seaver reaches on a slow ground ball down the third baseline, and Pete Rose has been charged with his first error at third. Well, uh, that's tough. I tell you this, there's only one way you play that ball. You just gamble, and if you if you win, why well, you get him. If you don't, that's it. But that's the only way in this world you're going to get the man on that ball. Well, Pete Rose, being the tight player he is, there's only one way he knows, and that's to gamble on it. And like Joe Pignatano, not real happy about that scoring ruling. He starts waving a, a towel up here toward the main press area. Seaver on, Del Unser at the plate. Reached on an error in the first inning, scored, had an RBI single in the second, so he's figured very, very prominently in the Mets scoring. Billingham delivers a taken strike. Jack with his best inning to date in the fourth when he got him out in order, but really in the third inning after giving up a hit to Cranepool, got stopped to bounce into a double play, retired Torrey on a ground ball to third. Strike two call. We'll be seeing the Mets again in July. They'll be in for a four-game series, a doubleheader on the 11th, Friday night beginning at 5.30, then 7 o'clock single game on Saturday the 12th, and on the 13th, a 2.15 game. Saber a short lead at first. Billingham tries to curve Unser out, but didn't get it over. One ball and two strikes. Got a tie game in the fifth inning, 3-3. Three to three. Cincinnati infield, a double play depth. Billingham working. Unser ground ball, shortstop. Davey, Morgan one. Tony, that's a fair. That's a third Cincinnati double play in five innings tonight. Concepcion has started two of them. Perez started the double play in the third off the bat of Rusty Staub. So two away, and got our third look of the night at second baseman Felix Mian. Scoreboard stopper named the four outfielders since 1900 who have led their leagues in homers and putouts in the same season. Now I'm going to tell you, you've got to be a baseball expert to come up with that answer. That is a bona fide $64,000 question. I mean, if the combined talents of Paul Summercamp and Dr. George Ballou cannot come up with the answer to that one, then got to throw that one out and start over again. Here's a pitch to Mian, a strike. Nobody on with two out. Mian, one for two, a strikeout. His last time, and he's behind 0-2. Pitch, ground ball, third base, Rose knocks it down, falls down, rolls to foul ground at the end of the Met dugout. Here's Mian, who stopped now, goes quickly to second, he's out. Two, oh, Morgan dropped the ball. 
That ball hit Rose and bounded behind the far end of the New York dugout. Neon pulled up as he rounded first base and tried to go on to second and got in there. Rose has been charged. Well, let's see. Are they charged him with another error? They scored out a double for Felix Neon. Bring up that crane pull, the seventh New York hit. Sacrifice fly to run home in the first inning and single to right in the third. He hits a broken back ground ball over the mound, but David will get there and throw him out at first base to retire the side. In the inning, no runs, one hit, one error, one man left on, and in the middle of the fifth inning, it's the Reds three and the Mets three. If you think Howdy Partner and Buenos Dias sound like pretty friendly ways to greet a Red Rooter from Cincinnati, the Strobe Brewery has some friendly news for you. On Saturday, June 21st, the Reds Rooters Club is off for Houston, Mexico City, and Acapulco. The point being to watch the Reds whip the Astros for two days in a row down in Houston, and then to join in a Mexican fiesta later in the week. On Saturday night and Sunday, the Reds versus the Astros, and of course a fine Strohs hospitality party at your hotel in Houston. Then on Monday, June 23rd, everybody flies down to Mexico City for some really great sightseeing. Friday, June 27th, you'll find yourself in Acapulco for fun in the sun, including a yacht cruise of Acapulco Bay. On Sunday, June 29th, you'll jet back to Cincinnati. For complete information and reservations, call the Barney Rap Agency at area code 513-381-7277. Once again, 381-7277. Just shout, ole, or better yet, strove. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning, we'll have the top of the order up against Tom Seaver, who had a rough and rocky fourth inning. The Reds coming back with three runs to tie the game up. Pete has walked and also hit a fly ball to center field. Well, we've got the answer for you through the stuffer tonight. The four outfielders who have led the league in home runs or led their league in home runs and putouts in the same year. Pitch to Pete Rose, swung on a ground ball right side, field it by Neon, he bobbled it, Rose will be a base runner. Well, Neon had to feel that ball deeply. Greenpool swept wide to his right to try and cut it off, he couldn't do it, and Neon has been charged with an error. So there's a go-ahead run if we can get it around, Kenny Griffey will be at the plate. The answer to the stump scumper, Wally Berger in 1935, DiMaggio in 37, Kiner in 47, and Mays in 62. We're told that Dr. Ballou had three of them. Well, I tip of the cap to you, sir. That's pretty good. Griffey 0 for 2. He tries to bunt third base side and fouls it off. The only one he didn't get was Willie Mays. DiMaggio. Rose at first base on the error by Neon, the third error in the game, first against New York. Griffey wants to bunt but takes the ball high, one and one. Torrey playing in shallow at third base. Seaver with that easy stretch motion. 1-1 one, one pitch. Griffey takes it way inside. Ball two. Two balls and a strike. Four Reds hits in the game, and all four came in the fourth inning. Single by Morgan, doubled a knock in a run by Bench, a home run by Perez, and a two-out single by Foster. There's ball three. Well, we'll take a walk. Alex Grammis threw the signs in the third base coaching box for the benefit of Ken Griffey. Griffey away from the plate, now walks back in. Seaver's 3-1 pitch. 
That's ball four outside, and we've got our first two men on to start the fifth inning. Saber has walked his third. We may get some activity underway in the New York Mets bullpen for the first time tonight. Rick Baldwin, a right-hander, heads down that way to begin throwing. So Rose at second, reaching on an arrow. Griffey gets a walk, and it's Joe Morgan who got the fourth inning underway with a single right field and scored on Bench's two-base set. Game is tied at three runs apiece. Morgan ground ball, first baseman Crane pool. He started to go to second as that ball took an extremely big hop coming off the seam of the AstroTurf, and all he could get was the out of Joe at first. Crane pool goes to the bag to retire Morgan. That's as good as a sacrifice with Rose to third, Ricky to second base, and Johnny Bench to the plate. John, after bouncing the first in the first inning, got a double to left field in the fourth on a ball that hit off the glove of Torrey. Well, two in scoring position, only a man out. Bench with now 27 RBIs on the year. Got a chance to pick up two more right here and send the Reds out in front. Infield playing back. The pitch taken high ball. Now the RBI leader in the National League, Bob Watson of Houston with 30. Dave Winfield has 29. 1 0 pitch. Swung on, popped straight back, and dropping just below us. Garvey, Simmons, and now Bench with 27 runs batted in. And Tony Perez also with 27. Saber even with Bench, a ball and one strike. Rose leading at third. Griffey leading at second base, one down. Saber to his wide, his pitch. Bench checks his swing in time, or it appeared that he did, and he did. Art Williams, the first base umpire, makes the call. It's two and one. Field around toward left and deep. Bench hits a high pop on the infield. Greenpool comes in behind the mound and he'll make the catch. Two out. Tony Perez. Two run home run in the fourth inning and before he steps to the plate, Yogi Berra starts out to the mound but now stops at the third base foul line and has a bit of a conversation with third base umpire Ed Fargo. Got the entire infield crowding around the mound as Seaver now walks toward the third base line and he and Yogi meet midway between the mound and the foul line as plate umpire Froming is over, so too is Vargo. And well, I don't know, Joe. It's Yogi stopped before he got out there. He charged with a trip to the mound here, no question about that. Don't think... Right? I I don't quite understand what uh, the problem is. Uh, whether Yogi, <laughs> to, to my knowledge, he's not been out there, and you're allowed uh, one trip on. Of course, the second one, you must change pitchers, and I, I don't know. Well, it looked like the plate umpire Froming had signaled to the Reds' dugout, that's one trip. Anyway, two out. Tony in and waiting. Here's a pitch. High inside, ball one. Seaver got him looking at a third strike in the second, but Perez homered in the fourth inning to tie it up at 3-3. Three to 1-0 three. delivery. Swung on a ground ball, base hit right field. Here comes Rowe. Here comes Griffin. Westy Stahl to the plate, not in time, and it is 5-3. Boy, I'll tell you, it's mighty good to see that guy swinging the bat. A two-out single to right field breaks the tie, and Perez on his way to a big night. He's now knocked in four out of our five runs. Well, in the first inning, uh, Marty, the first time up, Tony 
at the plate of Seaver's first pitch was in, kind of brushed him back, and then he went away from him. And uh, this is exactly what he tried to do with him here uh, this particular time at bat, only Tony was waiting on it. Geronimo takes a slow curve down and into him for a ball. Well, I guess hitters remember things like that. 1-0 delivery, swing and a miss. Well, you know, uh, sometimes when you do something like that where you brush a guy back, he becomes just a little gamer, and uh, sometimes it's good to just come right back inside or try to get the strike in on him. Strike two, swing, and I'm going to tell you something. Seaver blew that ball by Geronimo. One ball and two strikes. That's with a second productive inning back-to-back -back against Seaver. High and tight. Two and two. The Chief is grounded out to second and looked at a call third strike. Pitch. Chopper foul at the plate. Holding count of two balls, two strikes. Seaver delivers, and Geronimo just ticks it foul on the slow curve. Now, these two fifth-inning runs will go into the unearned run category, but it doesn't take anything away from a 5-3 to three Cincinnati lead. Perez at first. Geronimo ground ball foul. Doug Flynn, who... Acts as a guardian angel for Pat Darcy, throwing in the red bullpen, and Gary Waits catching, fields the ball. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two runs across. Rick Baldwin, the right-hander, continues to work in the Mets' bullpen. Geronimo, base hit left field. Slicing line drive will send Perez to second and holding there. The Reds, who were held without a hit for three innings, now have had six in the last two off Seaver. So you really have to wonder if the intense heat here might have an effect on the way Seaver is pitched, because you really have to doubt that he has pitched in hotter weather than this up to this point in the season. I doubt very much, uh, Marty, but uh, Tom's a strong young man, and five innings should not affect him after the three easy innings he had earlier. Time is called as Seaver delivers to the plate. Froming stepped out of the stepped out from behind the plate and has called a balk on Seaver. Now Tom is upset. As soon as he went into his motion and threw to the plate, Froming jumped down and off to the right behind hole plate, indicated a balk, and sent Perez to third and Geronimo to second. Seaver not a little bit happy about it. I I'll be honest, I wasn't looking at the moment. I was looking at my scorebook, uh, Marty, but uh, Yogi Berra, no one in the giant or the Met bench has said a word and other than Tom, and uh, maybe a little conversation to the plate before the game. Uh, Larry Shepard was discussing box with uh, Ed Fargo and Bruce Truman. He sure was. David, a base hit to left field. Here comes Perez. Here comes Geronimo. It is 7-3 Cincinnati, and boy, are we having a big inning. Well, the balk by Seaver proves to be his undoing as Yogi Berra has come back to the mound, and that's going to be all for the right-hander, Tom Seaver. I'll tell you what, you might mark this date down because we've seen some things here, especially in this inning, that have been few and far between, and that's a couple of big two-out base hits to produce runs. A single by Perez to fracture the 3-3 three -three tie. And after Geronimo's base hit, Concepcion, following the ball call against Seaver, lines a single to the left side of the New York infield, scoring two more runs, and it's now 7-3. to three. So we've got a change in New York pitchers, and as Baldwin comes in, we'll step out for this message. Hello, Gene Lehman, Riverside Ford. Would you like to save up to $2,000 on a 1975 Ford? You're hearing me correctly. Riverside Ford is having their first 1975 demo sale. 
We have cars on sale that have been used by company executives. You can save as much as $2,000. We have LTDs, LTD Landau's, T-Birds, Torino Elites, and Granadas. Folks, we have a tremendous selection of company-owned cars. Now, these cars all have our 12-month full factory extended warranty. If you do not live in the state of Kentucky, you do not pay Kentucky sales tax. And folks, we sincerely want your used car and trade. You can get 200 to $300 more for your present car and trade here at Riverside Ford. And I might add, it's official now, the 1976 model cars are going up in price. You can beat the price increase. You can save a lot of money right now. Get a 1975 demo at Riverside Ford's demo sale, which is going on right now at Riverside Ford in Newport, Kentucky. New pitcher on the mound for the New York match is right-hander Rick Baldwin, a youngster who is making his 13th appearance of the year out of the New York bullpen. He is a leader in that department of appearances, one and one on the year with a 405 earned run average. Baldwin has made one earlier appearance against Cincinnati at Shea Stadium when he won a third of an inning and gave up a base hit in a 7-1 New York loss. Tom Seaver, four and two-thirds innings. He gives up seven hits, seven runs, but only three earned against him. Strikes out five, walks three, and also balls. Foster at the plate, bounce to third and single to center field. Reds getting three in the fourth and four more in the fifth inning. And all four runs coming home after two men had been retired. Here's a throw to first base and Davey is back. The RBIs for Concepcion now give him a total of 23. Baldwin sights a sign from Grody. He delivers. Foster swings and misses at a curveball. Strike one. Baldwin, one of the young arms on this New York Mets pitching staff. They also have Randy Tate, a youngster. The 0-1. In on George. And a ball. One and one. Baldwin will not be 22 until the 1st of June. He's from Modesto, California. Pitched on the double-A level last year. Rather on the A level at uh, double-A at Victoria. Line drive hit the left. (laughs) Now the Reds continue to base in New York pitching. That's eight hits in the game for Cincinnati. The second for Yahtzee. As Concepcion goes to second. And Jack Billingham will become the ninth man to hit in the inning. Jack 0 for 1, a walk, a strikeout. Following checking, pitching, foul ball. I'm declaring myself right now. That was as good a swing as I've seen Jack Billingham take, and I know that Jolene is pulling for him, and I'm with her, so as of this moment, Billingham is my man whether you like it or not. <laughs> There's a ground ball to first. Trainpool makes a play near the line and goes to the bag to get the out. Boy, he hits some tough luck. <laughs> yeah, I think he really does. So, in the inning for Cincinnati, four runs on one, two, three, four base hits, one big New York era, and two men left on. At the end of five, it's a red seven, the Mets three. <laughs> Carry home something good to eat. 
Before the Mets come to bat in the sixth inning, we'll pause again for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. The home of the $5,000 button, WLW Cincinnati. Team night, a fireworks show, and a holiday doubleheader add to the Memorial Weekend Fun at Riverfront Stadium. Include the Cincinnati Reds in your holiday weekend plans. Rusty Stott for openers in the sixth for New York, who now finds itself down 7-3 to three to Cincinnati. Stott is hit into two double plays. He swings and grounds foul at first base. Well, a big night for the long ball in Major League Baseball tonight. Nine home runs have so far been hit on American League games, and the National League has shown six, including Tony Perez's earlier home run in the fourth inning. Frank Robinson a couple in the Cleveland game. Curve outside to stop, one and one. Joe Torrey, John Miller will follow. Jack Billingham, after a rough first couple of innings, has settled down very well. Strike two of fastball. He runs it in on it. Billingham out in front, a ball and two strikes. Jack looks, and he delivers. Another curveball, and this time it's high and outside. Two and two. Foul ball at home plate. Once again, the completed numbers on Tom Seaver, four and two-thirds innings. He gives the Reds seven hits and seven runs. Three of them earn runs. He strikes out five, walks three. That's had a three-nothing lead through three and a half. The Reds tied it up with three in the fourth and batted around, scoring four times in the fifth inning. Stop waiting on the 2-2 pitch. Bring up Joe Torrey. Twice he's hit ground balls to Pete Rose at third base tonight. One out here in the New York sixth inning as Torrey stands in. The pitch to him swung on and missed. Well, we pick up a bit of very interesting information from one of the writers covering the Mets, Jack Lang. This is the first time this season in nine starts that Tom Seaver has been knocked out of a game. Been lifted for a pinch hitter, but no one has knocked him out of a game. Ground ball again to second. The throw to first, and there are two down. Well, I'll tell you, that's testimony to the man's greatness when you've made nine starts and the first time you've been actually knocked out of a game by a club. Billingham, quite obviously, with his act together. Well, now work to John Milner, who has doubled and scored and had a fly ball to left. The Red 7, the New York Mets 3, as we play baseball in the 6, a breaking ball swung on and missed. Milner batting 216. Pitch away, but too much so. It's 1 and 1. Curve in, strike two call. Miller behind with two out of all two strikes. Billingham checks with bench. Delivers low and inside, ball two. Boston seven to three, a leader in the ninth over Oakland. Boy, the Red Sox have created undue headaches for Alvin Dark and his club. It's ball three inside. The big blow in that game has been a grand slam seventh inning home run by Carl Yastrzemski. Cleveland 2 0 over California in the seventh. New York, KC scoreless in the sixth. Milwaukee leading Texas 3 2 in the fourth. Here's a ground ball. Billingham backhands third base side and throws him out. That's out in order. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Reds 7, New York 3. Every beer lover knows When you end your day 
Tuesday, Detroit, Michigan. Family Brewers for 200 years. The Philadelphia Phillies will be at Riverfront Stadium this weekend for a three-game series. Friday night, Saturday at 7 o'clock, and Sunday afternoon at 2.15. Fans attending Saturday night's game are in for an extra special treat after the game because there'll be a gigantic fireworks show that's sure to delight every member of the family, young or old. Make plans to be on hand. Get your tickets in downtown Cincinnati at 580 Walnut in the stadium, at Reich's in downtown Dayton, at the central ticket office locations in Columbus, or at all Reds branch ticket agencies. Pete Rose, a high fly to left field on Baldwin's first sixth inning pitch. Milner near the line, and the left-hander brings it in. One out on one pitched plateward. Here's Ken Griffey. Reached on a fielder's choice, struck out, and walked and scored in that four-run Reds fifth inning. Left-hander Tommy Hall has started to throw for New York. What with Baldwin, the third batter up in the seventh. Seven to three, our side. Pitch, strike one call. And as Hall is loosening for New York, Doug Flynn is throwing down in the Reds' bullpen. Baldwin to strike one pitch. Inside a ball. One and one. There's a fastball over. Strike two, and it's a ball and two strikes. All in waiting for Griffey to get back in. On the way with a pitch, and it's low and in to him. Two and two, the count. The National League, Atlanta leading Montreal 6-3 in the eighth inning. In the fourth, Houston holds a 1-0 lead over Philadelphia. Two late games on the West Coast, St. Louis at San Diego and Chicago and L.A. There's ball three, and that Chicago-Los Angeles game that will get underway at 10-30. Two pitchers with undefeated records. Steve Stone, 5-0 for the Cubs. Andy Messersmith, 6-0 for Los Angeles. 3-2 the count on Griffey. He hits a high fly ball to dead center field. Unser loping in, pounds a glove, and makes a catch. Two out. Joe Morgan will be at the plate now. Set a fly ball to deep left, single to right field, and scored one of our seven runs, and then bounced out to Cranepool his last time up in the fifth inning. Pitch to Joe Morgan, swing and a miss, a pitch in on his fist. Tomorrow will be an off day for the Reds, and then the Philadelphia Phillies will be on in to begin a three-game series on Friday night. Hey, that's an exciting ball club now. We certainly saw good evidence of that in Philadelphia. One and one to count on Morgan. Dick Allen now in uniform. Dayton's Mike Schmidt. Ball two, Cash, Boa, Luzinski. And Danny Ozark is going to have his hammers ready for us. Underwood, Carlton, and Lonborg, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. Two out, nobody on. The 2-1 to Morgan is strike two call. Baldwin bringing it. Morgan line drive center a hit. Bill hanging out a frozen rope on that 2-2 pitch. The ninth of the game for Cincinnati. The second off of Rick Baldwin. And it'll bring up Johnny Bench who's one for three. A run scoring double in the fourth inning. have come in bunches for us. Four in the fourth, four in the fifth. Morgan's two-out single here in the sixth. Bench facing Baldwin for the first time. Here's a pitch to him. Swing and a miss.
Baldwin checking on Morgan. Joe bounces off the bag, the 0-1, outside as he tried to spot it over on the outside corner and didn't get it. Ball one and strike one. Next pitch, Brett swings, that's a base hit center field. Morgan to second base, and it'll bring up Tony Perez. Two odd back-to-back -back singles by Morgan and Bench, and this is the crowd reception for Tony. Two-run homer in the fourth inning, a two-run single in the fifth. Now 29 RBIs on the year. He's only one away from league leader Bob Watson. Baldwin stretches, delivers. Tony swings and misses. Perez's average stands at 224, and that may well be the highest it has been all year long. But it's well up from where it was at one time, and we pointed out earlier he has been swinging a very, very warm bat lately. He hammers one to dead center field, but Unser will make the play on that ball to retire the side. In the inning, no runs, two hits, we leave two on. And at the end of six complete at Riverfront Stadium, the Reds seven, the New York Mets three. Welcome once again to You Bet Your Balance, the ever popular game show that asks the question, is free checking really free? And now say hello to our contestant for the day. Hello, sir. Hi there. You have free checking, right? Right. No service charge, no charge per check, right? Right. And to get free checking, you had to come up with a big chunk of money for your minimum balance, right? Right. Now think carefully. Can you use your minimum balance? You're not supposed to. Right. What happens if you do? Well, I have to pay a service charge. Right. And now the biggie, all things considered, is free checking really free? Uh, well, it's not. Uh, uh, up. Oh. You won't find so-called free checking at First National Bank of Cincinnati, but you will find a variety of checking plans that give you access to all your money all the time. Because at First National, we think you deserve the right to use your money any way you see fit. After all, you earned it. First National Bank. It's the top of the seventh inning as Jack Billingham goes back to the mound, leading by four runs. We've got a defensive change for the Reds here to tell you about that and call inning number seven again is Joe. All right, Marty. Doug Flynn at second base replacing Joe Morgan. Joe out of the lineup. And of course, Joe with that cut on the right leg and got to get Joe a little rest. So Doug will be hitting in Joe's spot, number three in the Reds lineup. For the Mets, it's going to be Jerry Grody, Bud Harrelson, and a pinch hitter for Rick Baldwin. Tom Hall throwing in the New York bullpen. He will be the pitcher in the bottom half of the seventh. Grody stepping in. Jerry is one for two. Had an infield single in the second inning to drive in the second New York run. Billingham ready to go to work. He winds and delivers to Grody at just high a ball. Jack, after a shaky start, allowing a run in the first two in the second. Now he's gone through four innings of shutout baseball. The 1-0 to Grody, swung on, one bouncer, rose at third hatchet. Pete still on to Tony Perez, one away. That'll bring Bud Harrelson to the plate. Bud is 0 for 2, has hit a fly ball to right, and has bounced to the mound at his two times up. The Reds have out hit the Mets 10 to 7. Five of New York's runs uh, hits coming in the first three innings. Harrelson swings, and a line drive picked off the turf by Pete Rose at third, and Pete picks it up, turns and looks at Ed Vargo to third base on fire to make sure. Mr. Vargo fires up that right hand for the second out in the inning. He catching that ball just a couple of inches off the turf at third base. Bob Gallagher will be the pinch hitter for Rick Baldwin. Gallagher, well, let's see, will be making his third appearance at the plate. He is 0 for 2, has walked once. Bob Gallagher, a left-handed batter with two outs. 
Gallagher just called up a couple of days ago by the Mets. He takes a curve inside from Billingham, a ball. Reds leading at 7 to 3. Bellingham back to the plate. Gallagher swings and bounces it foul over to the photographer's booth and the visitor's dugout. Down evens one and one. Well, we'd like to wish a happy wedding anniversary to Art Seifert's in-laws, Sonny Kapner, 37 today. Art, of course, the batting practice, one of the batting practice pitchers for the Reds. Billingham, the 2-1 to Gallagher. That misses outside. 3-1 and one now. Jack waiting on Gallagher. Now he's back in the batter's box. Billingham, the 3-1 delivery. That swung on ground ball. Perez gets the tip of his glove on it. Can't hang on. And down the right field line on his way to second is Gallagher. Griffey's throw, not in time. And Gallagher with a pinch double with two out here in the seventh. Tony Perez just got the tip of his glove on it, slowed it down, and Gallagher's in the second with the double. Hit number eight for the Mets off Jack Billingham. Still that base hit. Jack had retired six straight. All right, here's Dell Unser. And Dell is. One for three. He was on to an error in the first inning. Single to drive in a run in the second and then bounced into a 6-4-3 double play in the fifth. Bellingham sets, delivers, and Unser looks at a fast ball and a call strike. Gallagher at second base, two away. Bellingham has not struck out anyone, nor has he walked anyone. He delivers to answer a curve that hangs outside, one and one. Will McEnany heads on to the Cincinnati bullpen to start throwing. Tom Hall has completed his throwing in the New York bullpen. All right, Billingham to the belt. He delivers the one one. That swung on line to center field. That'll be a base hit. Geronimo plays it on the big bounce. Gallagher will score easily, and it's a seven to four game. So with two out, the New York Mets come back to score a run. And that'll bring Felix Mion to the plate. Hit number nine for New York off Billingham. For answer is second RBI of the game. Mion has had two hits and three times at the plate, singled in the first. Struck out in the second and then doubled off the glove of Pete Rose in the fifth. 7 4 the score. Hunter at first base with two away. Bellingham ready and delivers to Mion high and inside, and Mion leans away. Saturday night, the 40th anniversary of the first night game played in Major League Baseball. 1 0 to Mion, just misses, two balls, no strike. Of course, the Phillies will be in Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 2 0 to Mion, he takes a strike, 2 and 1. Hunter leads at first. Two and one to count to Mion. The stretch by Bellingham and the pitch. That's a check swing foul. The count evens 2 2. Will McEnany in the Cincinnati bullpen throwing. The Reds with a three run lead, 7 to 4. All right, Jack. The stretch. He is 2-2 to me on, outside and low, full count. Red's outfield playing well around to the right for me on, although Foster stays about straight away and left. Give me on a lot of room in left center field. 
Payoff on the way. Mian swings a bounce. Rose at third has it. Long throw, and they get him by a step. Now, in the inning for New York, a run on two hits, no errors, one runner left on base. At the middle of the seventh, it's the Red Seven, the Mets four. People get old or sick or both. They live alone. It's pretty near impossible for them to get the hot meals they need to make them feel good. That's why Jim Frankert, John Wenham, Dick Manning, Paul Geyer, and Jim Youngflesh became members of an organization in Finley, Ohio, called Mobile Meals. On their lunch hours, these men take hot meals to people who otherwise wouldn't get them. And they bring more than food with them when they come to call. They bring warmth and kindness and love. These men don't have to spend time making people happy, but they want to, because they believe in people. These men are also full-time employees of Marathon Oil Company, Finley, Ohio. Marathon is people just like you. A new battery, actually, for the New York Mets. Left-hander Tom Hall is on the mound, and John Stearns behind the plate. Tom Hall is making his second appearance against the Reds. He worked a couple of innings against us in New York back on the 9th of May, a Friday night, allowing three hits and striking out one, no run. So Tom Hall, this is Tom's eighth appearance since joining the Mets. All right, he'll face Cesar Geronimo leading off here in the seventh for the Reds. And he delivers a slider in for a call strike. Geronimo is one for three. He singled in that big four-run fifth inning. A single to left field. All right, Hall's 0-1 to Geronimo. That's a fastball. Swung on the foul tip into the mid of Stearns. 0-2. Well, we have over 5,000 rosy reds and the guest here tonight. Swing and a one bouncer. Buddy Harrelson at short to his right. Has it throws on the crane pool. One away. One down and Dave Concepcion steps in. David with a hit and three times up. A big one in that fifth inning. David singling to left field to drive in a couple of runs. Hyde Hall delivers to Geronimo a called strike. Tommy's 0-1. David looks at it and it cost him strike two. So quickly Tom Hall out in front 0-2 to Dave Concepcion. Reds leading it 7-4. Hall shakes off a sign from Stearns and now Concepcion backs away from the plate. David quickly back in as Hall delivers the 0-2. That swung on, hit well to left field. Going back, Miller. He's a warning track. The fence gone! Well, Dave Concepcion, his third home run of the year on an 0-2 pitch. Tom Hall, I don't know whether he tried to throw it by David or just hung a slider out over the plate, but David hits it just to the left of the 375 mark, and the Reds... Lead it by a score of eight to four. First hit off ball. Concepcion's third home run of the year and his third RBI of the game. I give David 24 RBI, so the room of Perez and Concepcion have driven in seven of the eight runs tonight. All right, Hall working to George Foster. That swung on and a two bouncer to Harrelson. It's short, but it's on to a crane pull, two away. Two down, and here's my man. Tough break his last time up. Hit a ball hard to Ed Crane pool, and Ed made a fine play on it. Well, I, I might be elaborating just a bit. How about some of the ropes your guy hit? 
Billy Ham takes high from Hall of Ball. <laughs> they want all. Swung on ground ball and right at beyond. Felix up and throws on to Crane Pool and that's it. But in the inning for the Reds, a run on a hit, no errors, no one left on base. And we've gone through seven. The Reds lead it by a score of eight to four. Strohs presents a musical beer break. inning totals. The New York Mets, four runs, nine hits, one error. The Reds, eight runs, 11 hits, and two errors. Ed Cranepool will lead off the eighth for New York. Back to the action, Marty Brenneman. Okay, we'll pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. The home of the $5,000 button, WLW Cincinnati. The Cincinnati Reds will celebrate the 40th anniversary of night baseball on Saturday, May 24th. Fireworks will follow the game. Make plans now to be on hand. Thanks to Dave Concepcion, the Reds again back out in front by four runs, eight to four as Billingham starts the eighth inning and Will McEnany still loosening up in our bullpen. Ed Crane Poole, one for two, in addition to a run scoring sacrifice fly tonight. Left-handed batter, Billingham delivers and Crane Poole takes the curve inside, ball one. Jack gave up five hits in the first two innings and quite frankly, it did not look like he would be out there for a long period at all tonight. Got it together. Limited the Mets to only two hits in the next four before New York got a run home on two hits in the seventh. Two and nothing to count. That is a call strike, and it's two balls and one strike. Reds about to hit them 11 to 9. Outscored them 8 to 4. Here's a rope to right field that is in for a base hit. Griffey goes to the corner. Picks the ball up, Crane Pool towards second, and he is in standing with a double. So New York in double figures hit wise on Ed Crane Pool's two base hit. Rusty Staub, the hitter, figured very prominently last night in the New York 6 2 victory, but has had a rough time of it this game. Has bounced into two double plays and has grounded out second to first. Sparky Anderson on his way to the mound, and we may get a pitching change right now. McEnany was throwing as he, well, before the eighth inning started, actually. Mark says something to plate umpire Bruce Froming, who indicates to the PA announcer Paul Summercamp that we've got to have a change of pitchers, and that'll be left-hander Will McEnany. Well, I would certainly imagine that Jack's just a bit tired, and uh, you don't take any chances of uh, getting in deep trouble when he's this far along in the ball game, and... You have to give uh, Jack Billingham some credit now. Uh, as he pointed out, the way he started out, didn't look like he was going to survive the third inning, but came on to pitch uh, good baseball, uh, shutting him out for four innings until they scored that run in the seventh. So Jack uh, pitched very well and held us in there until he got some runs uh, with a little help. Uh, but, uh, a fresh pitcher is not a bad thing in the last two innings with a four-run lead. Will McEnany and coming in tonight makes his 15th appearance and I'm going to tell you he has become the stopper in the Reds bullpen to the extent that he has not allowed a run in his last nine outings covering 12 and one third innings. Will has a record of a win, no losses, picked up the victory last weekend in Montreal, a 159 earned run average. He'll be facing the left-handed batting Rusty Staub when we get back to it. The winning entries in the Reds McAlpin's Draw Your Favorite Cincinnati Reds Player Contest 
are on display this week at the downtown McAlpin store. Stop by and see them if you're in the area. Green Pool at second, nobody out. Reds up by four. Raleigh Eastwick has gone down to pick up where Will left off. Finals in the National League. This afternoon at 11, the Giants over the Pirates, two to one. Tonight, Atlanta beat Montreal, six to three. Houston won, Philadelphia nothing in the fifth. And St. Louis and San Diego, well, they got underway a couple of minutes ago. And that one, it's Bob Gibson against Joe McIntosh. Here's Stobb. McEnany delivers, and Rusty takes the ball. Twenty-one hits in the game tonight. It's been a wild one. High pop, shallow right. The Rook Flynn is back under and makes a catch. Joe Torrey, the batter, with one out. Retired on a fine fielding play by Rose in the second inning of his slowly hit ground ball. Bounced to third again in the third and was thrown out 4-3, rather, in the sixth inning. Torrey, a 228 batter, a four-hit night last night. Crane Pool, the base runner and leading at second base. McEnany, the long look to bench, the pitch. Ball strike. The 0-1, swung on a bouncing ball to shortstop, will get the run. Oh, the throw that way, and he's out of there. Well, they brought Crane Pool to third on the ground ball to the left side, and Davey delivered to Pete, who put the tag to get Crane Pool sliding at third base. Well, it's a good play, but a little dangerous, I'd say. <laughs> Got it out. That's the name of the game. Surprise me. Two away. They take a runner out of scoring position, six to five. Here's John Milner. Doubled his first time up, his flight out and bounced out. Frank is called to him. In the American League, one final score. Boston over Oakland, 7-3. The rest are still in progress. McEnany, a couple of negative shakes of the head. Gets what he wants, throws, and it's a ball away and low. One and one. Reds eight, New York four. The Mets bat in the eighth inning. McEnany on in relief of Jack Billingham. One-one pitch. Swung on and popped up behind the plate, but it'll be no play for Bench. One ball and two strikes. McEnany goes to rubbing up the new baseball. Windmills his left arm, adjusts his cap, looks in for the side. The pitch. He hammers one to right field. It's going to be a foul ball. That ball bounding all the way toward the fence and right center field away from Griffey. And now Roy McMillan, the first base coach, is going to carry the argument to Art Williams, who went well down the line and very, very emphatically signaled foul. John Milner not a little bit pleased with it. Cranepool cutting back across the infield, questioning plate umpire Bruce Froming. Well, the ball hit that deeply here at Riverfront Stadium. Actually, they go either way, right or left field, deep into the corners. It's out of our line of vision. Got a better perspective of the left field line than we do the right field line as we are located just a bit off to the right of home plate. What I'm trying to tell you is we couldn't see it. Here's a one and two pitch, and that's high and inside. Ball two. McEnany checking Torrey and fouls Milner back straight back and over the screen.
Will shakes off another side. Working to Milner, ground ball first. Tony has it to the bag and the side retired. No runs, one hit, one left. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It is Cincinnati eight, the New York Mets four. There's a feeling around. It's America sound. Pets the peace of feeling free. Free to choose a new way. Free to stand up and say, you be you and I'll be me. When you pet Memphis for living, then you'll be what Pepsi is given. Now Pepsi lives, a Pepsi gift for feeling free. Join the Pepsi people, feeling free, feeling free. number of Freedom Train tickets available at all Shilato stores. Teen night can be family fun night at Cincinnati's Riverfront Stadium this Friday. Young Reds fans who are age 19 may purchase regular 350 reserve seats for only $1.50. That means mom, dad, and two youngsters can see a Reds game for as little as $10. A great entertainment bargain. Make plans now to get the gang together for the next teen night when the Reds meet the Phils this Friday and get your tickets in advance. Pete Rose to start off the home eighth inning. Tommy Hall, the former Cincinnati Red, delivers high inside. Rose is 0 for 3. He's been on twice with a walk and an error and a score to run. There's a strike to him, and it's one ball and one strike. Kenny Griffey on deck. Or rather, Merv Rentman has moved to the on-deck circle. As Hall delivers a break even to Rose, and he grounds one by the third baseman. Backhanded by Harrelson. A jump throw, but not in time. Infield hit for Pete. So Marty, uh, Merv Rutman hitting here now. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see here. Merv, during batting practice tonight, was uh, had opened his stance a little more. You know, he's very closed, and... Uh, during batting practice, he opened his stance up more about parallel with the plate, uh, pulling that front foot back. And let's see if he tries that here. It uh, looks like he just a bit has pulled it back. Rose at first with an infield hit as Hall deals one in at the knees to pinch it a Rentman for a call strike. Ten Twelfth hit of the game for Cincinnati and the first for Pete Rose. Rettman ball high to him, one and one. The pitching totals on Jack Billingham, eight innings, ten hits, four runs, three earned. He had a strikeout. Doug Flynn will be up next. Ball checking Rose. Rettman checking his swing and it's ball two, two and one. Hall taking his time. He goes to the rosin bag. Reds are leading eight to four here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Ball's two one pitch. That is ball three high. So Hall behind to Redmond. Three balls and one strike. Jack in the pitch. Ball four. Got our first two men on base. Infield hit by Rose. A walk to Rettman. Bring up Doug Flynn. Boy, this young man stepped in in an emergency situation, filling in at second base Sunday afternoon for Joe Morgan, and all he did was deliver two doubles and four times up and picked up his first major league run batted in. Batting an even 200. Had three doubles this season, and the Met infield looking for the butt. He bunts it foul back behind the plate. Paul 
Well, the third New York pitcher. Seaver went four and two thirds. He stands to lose it. Baldwin an inning and a third. Tom came on in the seventh. Gave up a home run to Dave Concepcion. Here's the pitch, and that's up high. One and one. Rose at second base. Redmond at first. None out. Harry Parker, a right-hander, goes down to the New York bullpen. Corey Cranepool pulled in, and it's three balls and one strike. Pitch on the way, and that's high. Now it's three and one. It was two and one. Now three balls and one strike. Well, Flynn wanting to put a bunt down to get the runners into scoring position for Johnny Bench, but Tom Hall having trouble locating the strike zone here. Ready again with the next pitch. Swung on, hammered to deep left field. It is going to be a home run for Doug Flynn. Doug Flynn on a 3-1 pitch hammers one out of here to left field. His first major league home run, and it's 11-4 Cincinnati. Boy, what a thrill for that young man. Well, I guess Tommy Hall wishes he'd been able to get one over on some earlier pitches to give him the butt. Oh, they're going crazy in Bryan Station. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he hit that ball with a whole lot of authority. It hit off the facing of the green seats, and that ain't too bad. No, it is not. Second long, third long ball of the game for Cincinnati. Perez Concepcion earlier, now Flynn with a three-run blast here in the eighth. It's 11 to four. The Reds have lit up their former teammate. Johnny Bench scheduled a hit, but now that Flynn's home run has put the Reds up by seven, Bill Plummer is going to bat. Plummer pinch hitting for Johnny Bench is in the on deck circle, swinging the bat. As Tommy Hall waits out on the mound. Plummer batting 167, but he's only been up six times with one hit and one run batted in. Put on the big message board high atop the stands in center field, Doug Flynn's first major league home run. Old Bluegrass will be talking tomorrow. <laughs> Mars and off it. <laughs> Friday he will. That's right. Well, he'll save his best stuff for Friday when we all get together again. Plummer swings and misses. Strike two swinging. No balls and two strikes on Bill Plummer. Well, Pete started it with an infield hit to shortstop. Griffey got a walk, and then Flynn came up in a bunting situation. Hall wouldn't give him but one pitch to bunt and he fouled that off the first pitch. 3-1 the count and Doug swinging away and hammered one out of here. One and two as Hall misses away. Red's offense has come alive in a big, big way on this night. There's strike three call on the inside of the letters. One out. First strikeout for Hall, the batter Tony Perez. He's had a big night. After striking out of the second, a homer in the fourth with a man aboard, a two-run single in the fifth, and hit the ball very hard and lining out to Unser in the sixth inning. Call strike. Tony, a foul ball to the screen, 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes, one out, three runs across. 
to Tony. It's just a bit high for a ball. Friday night, the Philadelphia Phillies for the first of three. Gary Nolan, who pitched that four-hit route going victory over Montreal Sunday, will go against Tom Underwood. Tony strikes out swinging. Two down. It'll bring up Geronimo, who's had a hit in four times with a run score. Swing and a miss. The 11 run outburst for the Reds tonight equals their highest previous run total in a game when we defeated Atlanta 11 to 3 back on the 24th of April in Atlanta Stadium. Strike two call. No balls and two strikes. Also had double figures in two other games. 10 nothing over San Diego on the 13th of April behind Don Gullen and 10 2 over San Diego here on the 7th of May. Foul ball keeps it at two strikes. Hall tries to put Geronimo away, but the pitch stays up high, and it's one and two. Should Geronimo get on, it'll bring up Dave Concepcion, who's on deck. Pitch. Outside, two and two the count. San Diego and San St. Louis are underway in the second inning. No score in that game. The 2-2 two -two pitch, strike three swinging, and Tommy Hall has struck out the side. But for the Reds in the eight, three runs on two hits. Nobody left on, and at the end of eight complete, it's the Reds 11, the New York Mets 4. Stop and enjoy a big, big boy And out with that hamburger treat The national favorite coast to coast So stop and enjoy a big, big boy Watching the Reds win at Riverfront Stadium has always been a great way to spend the day. And one sure way to add to that enjoyment is going to Frisch's before or after the game. It's all part of the tradition. Why Frisch's? Because not only does Frisch's offer a wide variety of great tasting treats from sandwiches to full course dinners, they also have the convenience of curb service. When you drive into Frisch's, there is never any waiting for curb service. You simply press the button on the speaker and your order is taken immediately. Fast, easy, and convenient. That's the best way to describe Frisch's curb service. So the next time you're on your way to the game, curb your appetite. Well, we go to the top of the ninth inning as Will McEnany will try to shut off the New York Mets. The Reds up by an impressive seven runs at 11 to four. And New York will start it off with the rookie catcher, John Stearns. Young man who came over from the Philadelphia Philly organization in the Tug McGraw trade along with Del Unser. And boy, the New York people are very high on this youngster. Batting 267, he's a right-handed batter. Mack delivers a strike on the outside to him. Stearns batting 185, not 267, has had a homer in three RBIs. The 0-1 to him has swung on and missed, strike two. Billingham stands to win it. Seaver stands to take the loss. Strike two, the count on John Stern. Pitch outside. One ball and two strikes. Gene Clients is on deck. He'll be batting for Bud Harrelson. Outfield playing Stern straight away. Infield likewise. Foul ball. Here in the night, some changes for the Reds. We've got catching Bill Plummer and right field Merv Rettman. Rest stays the same. Perez at first, Flynn second, Concepcion short, Rose third, Foster and Geronimo left and center. Here's a bouncing ball to shortstop. David gets a chest high hop and throws him out. One out. Here's Gene Kleins. He was a starter in center field last night with a left-hander gullet on for the Reds. Kleins batting 
132 with no homer, no RBIs. He's had five hits and 38 trips with a double, his only extra base hit. Lines batting for Bud Harrelson with one man out, and Jesus Alou has moved on deck to bat for the pitcher. Another ground ball shortstop. David up throwing, two down. So the Mets are down to their final out. Batter and Alou to be the hitter, hitting 350 with seven for 20. All singles, three runs batted in. So Will will try to get a Lou and wrap it up for Cincinnati. Two out, the base is empty, 11 to 4 our side. Here's the left hander's first pitch, and it's in for a taken strike. Don't forget to stay tuned on most of these same stations. Joe Nuxall with the star of the game show, and then scores and comments immediately following. Foul at the plate, strike two, and Will McEnany throwing nothing but bullseyes here in the ninth inning. Checking in with Plummer. The 0-2 pitch. Line foul between the bag and the coaching box at third. Count stays at two strikes. Will fingering the new baseball. Alou waiting pitch. Too much inside and high. One and two. Bell Unser hoping to get a bat. That's too low, and it's two balls and two strikes. That pitch just did miss. That's trail at 1.3 to nothing. Before they rolled out the heavy artillery. Three homers, 13 hits. 2-2 two -two on the way. Ground ball over the mound, and that'll be through. Up the middle of base at center field. Pinch single for Jesus Alou will bring on Del Unser in his bid to chalk up a three-hit night and also keep him at ninth inning alive. Reached on an error, single two runs across with base hits in the second and seventh. Bounced into a fifth inning double play. The first hit off Will, he came on after Billingham gave up the double of Crane pool in the eighth. Strike call. Got Stop, Torrey, and Milner in order, and then here in the ninth, got Grody and Kleins, uh, Stearns and Kleins on consecutive ground balls to short. The four loose singles to center field. The strike one pitch, strike two swinging. Nothing in two. So it's down to one strike. Stretch, the pitch, outside a ball. Reds will go one game back over the 500 mark at 21 and 20. Not concerned about a Lou, the Reds defense. It's one and two pitch. Just missing the outside corner, ball two. McEnany mopping his brow as Unser steps back in. Plummer hangs his side. Will the pause a pitch? Ground ball foul at first base. Lou returning back to the bag at first, and McEnany will again deal the 2 2 pitch to Del Unser. Here it comes. That's ball three on a curve. Now Will heading behind at 0 and 2. Alou will be off with a pitch. The 3-2 pitch on the way to Unser. Fly ball, however, to deep center field. Drifting back, Geronimo, and this one belongs to the ref. Here in the ninth inning for the New York Mets. No runs, a hit, a man left. Final score tonight. The Reds, 11. The Mets, 4. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. Oh, 
Brunch at the Stro Brewery want to remind you that it's Stro a party time. And they also want to give you a free recipe on how to Stro a party. So, here goes. First, get yourself some good music like this. Next, add some good friends and neighbors. Spread around some good snacks like potato chips, pretzels, things your friends like, or be different, and surprise them with something new and good. Then top everything off with plenty of good, cold Stroh's beer. That's the important part. Blend it all together, and you've got yourself one great party. Keep this in mind the next time you're out shopping, and look for the Stroh Party display featuring our Stay Cold 12-pack wherever you buy beer. And we'll see you at the party. Well, an out-of-sight performance by the Cincinnati Reds offense tonight, a phase of the game that has seemed to elude this club over the last week to ten days, but tonight was not the case by any means. The Reds falling behind three to nothing before striking and striking big. Three runs to tie in the fourth, a four-run outburst in the fifth inning, a run of the seventh, and Doug Flynn's first major league home run in the eighth inning with two runs, two men aboard, to make the final score 11 to four Cincinnati. 11 runs, 13 hits, two errors, and seven left on for our side. The Mets had four runs, 11 hits, an error with six left. Jack Billingham, who went the first eight innings before giving way to Will McEnany, picks up his fourth victory of the year. He's lost three. And Tom Seaver, who had not been knocked out in any of his eight previous starts, was knocked out tonight when the Reds jumped on him for those four runs in the fifth inning to take the lead for good. And Seaver absorbs his fourth defeat in nine decisions. 11 to 4, the Reds win it to go one back game back over the 500 mark. Stay tuned. We'll be back with our closing comments on the wrap up in just a moment. Hello, sunshine. Hello, Mountain Dew. With the lemony look of sunshine and the different taste that's right for you. Fresh as sunrise. number of Freedom Train tickets available at all Shilato's stores. The Reds by winning tonight again go one back game back over the 500 mark at 21 wins and 20 losses and we'll have a day off tomorrow before beginning the three game weekend series here Friday night against Danny Ozark's Philadelphia Phillies and in that game it's going to be right-hander Gary Nolan trying to even his record out of 3-3 on the year against the rookie left-hander Tom Underwood, who has pitched so impressively, especially in his last two starts with a shutout over the Reds at Veterans Stadium in Philly and a four-hit conquest in his last start. He's 5-3 and three on the year. That game will get underway at 8.05. It should be a very interesting weekend because I would have to feel that the Reds uh, have a little bit more incentive going for them when they take on the Phillies this weekend than in the wake of what the Phillies did to us in Philadelphia in this recently completed road trip, taking all four games. And it should be a dandy weekend of baseball with... Nolan going against Underwood Friday, Darcy versus the left-hander Carlton on Saturday at 7 o'clock, and Gullet to battle right under Jim Lonborg in the series wrap-up at 2.15 on Sunday afternoon. So we hope you'll make it out, but if you can't, we'll be on the air on most of these same Reds Baseball Network stations Friday night with the pregame shows beginning at 7.35. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by Cincinnati Reds Incorporated solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Cincinnati Reds Incorporated is prohibited. Hope you'll stay tuned now for Joe Nuxall with the Star of the Game show. Again, the final score tonight, the Reds 11, the Mets 4. You've just heard the Reds on radio with Marty Brenneman and Joe Nuxall. Reds baseball has been brought to you by Stroh's family brewers for 200 years, from one sports lover to another, and by the Marathon Oil Company, people who believe in people. By the First National Bank of Cincinnati, 
where your money grows safely in high-return certificates of deposit. <laughs> By the Pepsi-Cola Bottling Company of Cincinnati. Bottlers of Pepsi-Cola, Dr. Pepper, and Schweppes products. <laughs> By Frisch's. Frisch's, sports, or any kind of fun. They just naturally go together. And by Riverside Ford in Newport, a block and a bridge from downtown Cincinnati. Follow the 1975 Cincinnati Reds and tune in next time for more Reds on Radio on this, the Cincinnati Reds Baseball Network. Try my Jackson's Apple Jack chewing tobacco just one time. And I'll guarantee you, your mouth will wake up, your body will tingle, <laughs> and you'll come back from over. WLW Radio, Cincinnati. Hello, Gene Lehman, Riverside Ford. We'd like to sell you a new 1975 Granada. We've ordered 50 extra Granadas. They're arriving daily. We have a special price on them. You can buy a new Granada. This is a brand new 1975 Granada, the full price of only $3,129. And we have them in a variety of colors. Riverside Ford always needs good used cars in trade. We have three large used car lots, and we continually need good used cars for these lots. This is why you can get $200 to $300 more for your present car in trade at Riverside Ford. Folks, we have the best Ford service in this area. So if you're considering buying a new Ford product, especially a Granada, you want to come to Riverside Ford. We're a block and a bridge from downtown Cincinnati in Newport, Kentucky. We have a tremendous selection of cars and trucks, but right now, we're having a special sale on Granadas. You can buy a brand new 1975 Granada, the full price, $3,129. We'll see you in Newport, Kentucky tomorrow. Now, star of the game with Joe Nuxall. Brought to you by your neighborhood admiral and speed queen appliance dealers. Yep. Well, the Reds tonight over the New York Mets by a score of 11 to 4. And I guess... Well, as you go through a career in baseball, there's a lot of things that you enjoy, and certainly uh, the first win is a pitcher, the first base hit is a batter, and certainly the big one is the first home run of your major league career. And of course, Doug Flynn, the night after attempting to bunt a couple of times, or I should say one time to be exact, for the count three balls and one strike, Doug, he hit one off of the facing of the green seats here at Riverfront, and I tell you, it's a pretty good little poke. And as Tom Hall, or as Doug says, was a bluegrass fastball. What that means, I don't know, but we're going to find out because our star of the game tonight is Doug Flynn. We'll be back with Doug after this word. This is the old left-hander for Security Moving and Storage Company. You've heard us say that Cincinnati Reds fans are some of the best fans in the world. But back in 1903, the total attendance for the year was only 351,680. And to think that last year, we had an attendance of over 2 million for the second straight year. That's really moving up. 1903 was important for another reason. It was the year Security Moving and Storage Company started in business. Since that time, they've moved a lot of Cincinnati Reds fans. People moving up. People who wanted a smooth, dependable move. It's a thought to keep in mind. The next time you're rounding third and heading for a new home, Call the Reds fans at Security Moving and Storage. Let Mark Ray, Greg Cutlip, or Charlie Briscoe give you a free estimate. Security Moving and Storage Company, agent for Allied Band Lines, Cincinnati's major league mover since 1903. I start the game tonight, Doug Flynn. As we mentioned, Doug with his first major league home run with a count of three and one against Tom Hall, a former teammate of Doug's. Doug hit the ball off the face into the green seats, and, well, uh, first thing we're going to ask Doug if he's sure he touched all four bases. <laughs> I had to make sure, Joe, I didn't even get to watch it because uh, I was hopefully, you know, hopeful the ball was going out, and I was thinking if it doesn't go out, then there's any way I'm going to be able to hit one. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> Doug, go ahead. I saw. Doug, uh, of course, uh, hitting a first home run in any time in any career, it's a, it's a great feeling, and as you said, when you hit the ball, you hit it well enough. Uh, didn't you feel it was going out or not? Well, I thought that it probably would. I only hit two last year, but uh, when I hit one like that, you know, it's such an unusual thing that I, I feel like it's going out. I'm just glad that it came at a time when we could get some more runs, and they were off and running again. Doug, you talk about uh, Tom Hall, and of course, uh, 
uh, Sparky had sent you up there, and actually you were bunting until the count came three and one. Right, I think the score was eight to four, and uh, they had runners on first and second, and we were going to try to get the men over. And then when he got three balls and one strike, I looked down to Alex and had the hit sign, and uh, you know, I was just fortunate to get a good pitch and fortunate that the ball went out. Doug, where was the pitch? It looked like it was over, oh, maybe the inside half the plate of around belt high, a little higher. It was. It was. We were actually right down the middle, and it was just above the belt. And uh, it was, you know, just one of those pitches that you like to see. And uh, I was fortunate that I hit a good. Maybe that's the reason you call it bluegrass fastball, huh? <laughs> well, I don't, bluegrass fastball, they used to get on us about the farmers always swung at a high pitch, you know, and that ball was just a little bit up, so I kind of refer to it as that. <laughs> well, I think, you know, really when you, you think of a uh, home run, uh, probably 50% uh, of home runs hit by anybody are probably up the uh, belt high or buck. Yes, sir, but for me, they have to be because I'm not too strong, and, uh, of course, I don't hit too many home runs either. Doug, of course, uh, in Montreal, uh, you got your first uh, Major League RBI uh, Sunday. Yes, sir, that's right. I, uh, I, I hit a double and scored George Foster, I believe, and uh, I was just fortunate again, you know, that I think he misplayed the ball a little bit, so uh, that helped out. We're talking with Doug Flynn here in the dugout. Doug with his first Major League home run, and we'll be back with more after this work. I'm Roger Miller with some good news. Now you can save 25% on Gabriel Striders shock absorbers. Buy three Striders and get the fourth one free. Striders are the shock's road and track magazine declared overall winner of all shocks tested on a 74 Corvette. Striders are three-way adjustable shocks. You set them to regular, firm, or extra firm, and you get a ride that's just right for your car and the way you drive. Save now where you see the buy three, get one free sign. But hurry, this special four for three offer ends May 31st, 1975. And how can you beat that? Gabriel Striders. Buy your Gabriel shock absorbers at Johnson Service Station, US 50 in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, or at Richter Service Station, 2026 Harrison in Cincinnati, Ohio. Doug Flynn, our star of the game, and we're sitting here uh, talking to the commercial break, and Doug says, well, he says, uh, you know, I'm still excited about this, and uh, I'm having trouble talking. But, Doug, I guess, really, uh, you think about it, and I think every ball player that ever played this game and the major leagues, that first one uh, was very exciting, regardless of what the circumstances were, and tonight uh, it really was a circumstance where it put the game out of reach. Yes, sir. Well, I, I was glad that my family was here to be able to enjoy that. You know, I think they're wearing out I-75 coming up here, but I'm really glad that they got to see it, and I'm really fortunate it came at a time when it did help us, you know, to uh, have a better lead. Doug, of course, your dad, Bobby, uh, you say is here tonight, and you made a remark uh, before we started uh, the program that uh, usually when your dad or your family is here, you don't do too well. Well, when I was playing in high school and college, he was always uh, officiating basketball games or baseball games. And then every once in a while, he'd get to see me play, and I'd play really bad. And so uh, he's been up here every night. You know, surely I'd have one good game as much as he's been coming up here. So uh, I'm just very happy that he got to see this. Doug, you said something, uh, again, during the commercial break, the fact that, that Clue has been working with you uh, at the plate. What has he been doing with you? Right. Well, I was uh, hitting defensively when I got here in the spring training. I wasn't, but when I got here, uh, I started trying to press a little bit, I believe, and I wasn't getting any power because I was taking my bat from the stationary position and trying to go after the ball. And so every day, Clue's been uh, working with me to get my bat moving a little more, and then Alex is coming out early, and they've both been helping me to get my bat going, and, and the balls have been going off the bat a lot better, and uh, I think that's, you know, it's been a big help to me. Doug, I guess you, you talk about getting a bat started, and uh, if, if people understand what you just said, in other words, holding the bat, say, over your uh, right shoulder, and, and going from there, and, and what I think the, for the folks to understand, more or less what they're trying to do with you is get the cock the bat more or less in other words get it started right well guys like you know johnny bench and tony they are so strong that they don't if they have a ball that they might get jammed on they're strong enough that they can go on and hit the ball for a base hit whereas i'm not that strong and the balls that they're hitting for base hits are pop-ups or just weak grounders and john uh, uh, uh dougie uh, you talk about hitting and uh, really basically you can't say well 
that home run makes me a, uh, a home run hitter. No, sir, it doesn't, but it makes me awfully excited. <laughs> Doug, congratulations on number one. And, well, we hope you have many more of them, but more than that, a lot of important base hits. Thank you very much, Joe. All right. Doug Flynn, our star of the game, and Doug with his first Major League home run as the Reds won it by a score of 8-4 to four over the New York Mets. That's it from here in the dugout. Now, on most of these same stations, stay tuned for Marty Bunham with scores and comments. Tomorrow on off day, and then the Philadelphia Phillies move into town for a three-game series starting Friday night. Until then... This is the old left hander rounding third heading for home. Good night, everyone. You've just heard Star of the Game with Joe Nuxall, presented by Gabriel Shock Absorbers. There's a Gabriel Shock that's right for your car and the way you drive. This is your roving real estate reporter with Bill Shook of West Shell Realtors. Bill, early in April, West Shell started a real estate information center, a telephone service that people could call and get answers to their questions about real estate. Now, how's that been going? Very well. We've been very pleased at the number of people who've called. Now, what sort of questions have you been getting? Well, people are very interested in finding out about tax credits. We've had a lot of questions on that subject. Also on financing plans, FHA and VA loans, with emphasis on the seller's obligation, discount points, FHA appraisals, maximum loan amounts, questions on taxes, condominiums. Sounds like almost anything connected with the buying and selling of real estate. Just about. Well, Bill, how do people get in touch with a real estate information center? Just call 721-4200. 721-4200. Right. Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. For total service in real estate... Time now for scores and comments with Marty Brenneman, brought to you in part by Kenmont Dodge, 7788 Montgomery Road, Cincinnati. Hello again, everybody, back at Riverfront Stadium, where tonight we witnessed a big, big offensive show by the Cincinnati Reds and rolling to an 11-4 come from behind victory over the New York Mets. And a lot of offense, some home runs, we'll be telling you all about it later on. But first, we'll turn now to the American League, where two game finals are in, and Cleveland defeating the California Angels, 3-2, three, three runs, five hits, and no errors for Cleveland. Two runs, five hits, one error for California. Kern, the winning pitcher, 1-0. Tanana, the loser, 2-2. Two and two. And a big night at the plate for Cleveland's playing manager, Frank Robinson. He hammered two home runs, his second and third of the year, both with nobody on base, but the Cleveland winning run coming in the bottom of the seventh. The Boston Red Sox nailed another loss, 7-3 at Fenway Park. Four home runs hit in that game. Rico Petroselli, a two-run blast for the Red Sox, his third. And the big blow, a seventh-inning grand slam by Carl Yastrzemski, his third of the year. Gene Tennis, number six. Reggie Jackson, number seven. Solo home runs for Oakland. Seven runs, eight hits, no errors for Boston. Three, seven, and one, the Oakland numbers. Cleveland, the winning pitcher, three and two. Holtzman, the loser. His record dips to three and five. Kansas City and New York are playing in the 10th inning at Chase Stadium, and that game is all locked in at one run apiece. New York scoring in the bottom of the 6th inning. Kansas City to come back to tie it against Doc Medich in the 7th. The Texas Rangers and the Milwaukee Brewers have completed 6 up in Milwaukee, and that game has the Rangers out in front by a score of 5-4. to four. Jim Spencer has hammered a home run for the Texas Rangers with two men on base in the 2nd inning, his 4th of the year. Baltimore leading the Chicago White Sox by a score of 6-1 to one through 6 complete. Two home runs for Baltimore. Bobby Gritch with two men on base in the first inning, his seventh of the season. And Lee May, his sixth of the year, a solo shot in the sixth inning. At the end of six in Minnesota, the Twins and the Detroit Tigers. Minnesota lead in that game by a score of five to, or rather, that game is tied up at four apiece. And four home runs in that one. Willie Horton and Gene Michael have homered for Detroit. Eric Soderholm and Steve Braun have hit home runs for the Minnesota Twins. Again, repeating the final scores in the American League tonight. Cleveland by a run over California, 3-2. Frank Robinson, two homers in that game. And Boston defeating Oakland by a score of 7-3. We'll check out the National League in just a moment. Two reclining bucket seats and car lighting for both your feet and windows made of tinted glass. A key for locking up your gas. The outside air can flow right through in front. The splits are standard, too. How did Dodge Coat put so much in such a little car? For fighting rust, the steering column will adjust the bumper guard to front and rear. You get a thrifty engine here, a four speed chip that's on the floor, and inside would release some more. How did Dodge Coat put so much in such a little car? 
Winner of the Win a Colt Contest, sponsored by the Cincinnati Dodge Dealers. Register at one of the six participating Cincinnati Dodge Dealers as often as you like, or send a standard size postcard with your name and address to Win a Colt, 550 East 4th, Cincinnati 45202. There's nothing to buy. Drawing will be held Friday, June 13th. You may be the big winner. Two recliner bucket seats and carpeting for both your feet and windows made of tinted glass to keep locking up your gas. How did Dodge Colt put so much in such a little car? Dodge for 75 at Kenmon Dodge, 7788 Montgomery Road, Cincinnati. Turning now to the National League and the only day game played in Major League Baseball today, the San Francisco Giants and the Pittsburgh Pirates win 11 innings before the Giants scored to nail the Bucks by a score of 2-1. Two, two runs, eight hits, and no errors for San Francisco. A run on seven hits and no errors for Pittsburgh. John Montefusco was a starter for the Giants, gave way to Gary Lavelle in the 10th. Jim Barr in the 11th, Barr the winning pitcher, 5-3, and three, while Dave Justy came on in relief of Bruce Keeson, and he took the loss. His record is 2-1. and one. one home run, Willie Montanez for San Francisco in the fifth inning with nobody on base. Home run number five for Montanez. The Atlanta Braves continue to hit home runs with regularity. They slammed three out of their stadium tonight en route to a 6-3 victory over Montreal, and two of the three home runs were hit by third baseman Darrell Evans. His seventh came in the first with nobody on. His eighth came in the fourth inning with nobody on base, while Mike Lum had a third Atlanta homer with nobody on in the fifth inning, his second of the year. Gary Carter, the rookie catcher right fielder from Montreal, had his fifth of the year with nobody on in the sixth inning for the Expos. Six runs on nine hits and two errors for Atlanta. Three runs, eight hits, and no errors for Montreal. Bill Necro, the winning pitcher, and running his record to three and four. Steve Ranko, the loser, 0-2, and, and it took only one hour and 56 minutes for the completion of that Atlanta victory over the Expos. Two games underway, still in progress at the end of seven under the dome. Larry Durker is shutting out the Philadelphia Phillies and Wayne Twitchell, four to nothing. Houston coming up with a run in the third, coming back with three more in the fifth inning. And at the end of three and a half innings at San Diego Stadium, no score, the Cardinals and the Padres. Bob Gibson, one win, three losses for the men of Red Shandies. Joe McIntosh, four and two, the starter for San Diego. The starting pitchers have been posted for the Chicago-Los Angeles game, and rather than Steve Stone, it'll be the former Dodger Jeff Zahn going against his ex-club and Andy Messersmith, who has won six and lost none. Once again, the finals in the National League, a day game at its Candlestick Park, Saw the Giants in 11, deal the Pirates a 2-1 defeat, and the Atlanta Braves with two Darrell Evans home runs leading the way, knocking off Montreal 6-3. We'll be back to recap the Reds' 11-4 victory over the New York Mets after we pause again for this. Seven great days of sports are dropped off at your home at the crack of dawn, seven great days a week when you subscribe to The Inquirer. Whether you skim headlines or take time to read the small print, The Inquirer keeps you on top each morning for an informed conversation all afternoon. Callahan. Hetzel, Ford, Dressman, and Flynn give you five different views for a great slant on sports, seven great days a week. What the Reds did today or tonight will be at your door the first thing in the morning every day of the week. Then at 7 come 11 with Jimmy the Greek every Friday of the seven great days of the week. Exclusive in the Inquirer. Just another great slant on sports. You get first, fast, and fresh each morning. Seven great days a week. Get a head start on world, national, and local news each morning in the Inquirer. Subscribe now by calling 651-4500. Find out why the Inquirer is Cincinnati's preferred newspaper, not only in sports news, but in all other news categories as well. That's 651-4500. Call now for home delivery of the Inquirer. It'll make your day seven great days a week. 26,229 on hand tonight, and they saw things start very, very badly for the Cincinnati Reds because the New York Mets came up with a run in the first inning, an honor and run off Jack Billingham, and then had two more runs on four base hits in the second to open up a three to nothing lead. And that's the way it remained until the bottom of the fourth inning when the Reds started zeroing in on New York starter Tom Seaver. A base hit by Morgan, a run scoring double by Johnny Bench, and that was followed by home run number six of the year by Tony Perez off the facing of the green seats in left field to tie the game up at 3-3. The fifth inning was the biggest inning of the night for the Reds, and they enjoyed three big offensive innings in the game because in the fifth, they batted around, scoring four times to take the lead for good. And the big blows in that four-run fifth inning, a two-run single by Tony Perez, who enjoyed a four-RBI night, and a two-run single by Dave Concepcion, who later added a seventh-inning home run to knock in three runs. 
That three run, four runs in the fifth inning gave the Reds a seven to three lead. Concepcion's home run in the bottom of the seventh made it eight to four because the Mets had scored run in the upper half of the inning. And then came the eighth inning. The Reds were leading eight to four in the game against their former teammate, left-hander Tom Hall. Pete Rose opened with an infield hit deep in the hole at shortstop, and Ken Griffey then drew a base on ball. Doug Flynn, who came in to play second base in the seventh inning to give Joe Morgan a blow, was up there trying to move the runners along. He bought it foul on the first pitch, and then Hall missed with three straight deliveries to run the count to three and one. Uh, Doug Flynn stepped out of the box, checked in with Alex Grammas in the third base coaching box, and got the hit away sign, and here's what happened. Ready again with the next pitch. Swung on, hammered to deep left field. It is going to be a home run for Doug Flynn. Doug Flynn on a 3-1 pitch, hammers one out of here to left field. His first major league home run, and it's 11 to 4 Cincinnati. And it's needless to say that Doug Flynn, our star of the game tonight, and the happiest young man probably in all of Cincinnati, maybe in all of Ohio, as far as that's concerned. And as Joe pointed out, they're dancing in the streets in Lexington, Kentucky, and in the suburbs of that college town tonight, because this young man will remember the night of May 21st for a long, long time, his first major league home run. Jack Billingham, the winning pitcher, with fine relief help from Will McEnany. Jack is 4-3, and three. Seaver the loser, 5-4. and four. The first time in nine starts this season that the New York ace right-hander has been knocked out of a game. So the Reds are now 21-20 and 20 as they go one game back over the 500 mark and will enjoy a Thursday off before welcoming the Philadelphia Phillies in here on Friday night. And in that game, the pitching probables will have Gary Nolan going to the mound with a 2-3 and three record for our side. Rookie left-hander Tom Underwood on for the Phillies. He's won five and lost three. Game time, 8.05, and our broadcast time on most of these same Reds baseball network stations will be 7.35. A lot of good things happen to Cincinnati tonight, the kind of things that you've come to expect from a Reds ball club, and maybe tonight's game will be the beginning of big, big things to come. Once again, the final score tonight, the Reds 11, the New York Mets 4. Until Friday night, for Joe Nuxall, this is Marty Brenneman from Riverfront Stadium saying so long, everybody. This has been Scores and Comments with Marty Brenneman, presented by The Inquirer, with seven great days of local, national, and world news.